for <laughs> uh, alphabetically by our first names, and this happened time. Okay, we are live. It's in the alphabet. Tonight's mm -hmm. topic is going to be, uh, and we're just going to start this off kind of like on topic, kind of stay on topic for a little while, kind of a round table. Uh, feel free to answer, ask questions throughout the whole chat. Uh, we're going to start off with the topics of gun storage, how you safely store your gun, car, home, however, uh, backup guns, whether you carry one, what do you think of them, do you keep one, uh, and then we're going to finish up with home defense, what kind of weapons do you believe for home defense, how do you outfit those weapons, and then we'll just go to general free-for-all like we always do. So uh, tonight we're just going to start off here by introducing everybody. Uh, you've seen that was before. I'm the Yankee Marshal. I'm Mr. D.B. Cooper, 456. Eric here. And I'm David. Yankee Marshall is not my actual name, believe it or not. <laughs> I'll well, be playing I, I the feel role bad of, about... Oh, Sorry. Man. I'll be playing the role of Never Enough Ammo, but my actual name is the Hoskins Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is John. My YouTube channel is Chaos311 Clarity. Edge, are you there, brother? Edge, yeah, I'm here. Edge, four thousand six. And Stone Guy, two two three. Appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. Had a video in the background. Hey. I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, now that yeah. we've got it uh, going here, I don't know if my chat is working tonight. Let's see. I'm, I think it's. Yeah, can you post a link if you have it? Sort of right. I already did one, so I'll do it again here. Oh wait, never mind. I said it. It was right yeah. there. Issue is. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, Thank you, sir. First thing we'll talk about is gun story. Do you want to go through here and ask uh, each and every member of the panel, starting at the right over there with Stone Guy, we'll work our way left on the first question. How many different types of storage for guns do you have in your home, and what do you feel is the minimum required storage for guns? All right. Um, currently, I have one big safe... Um, that's a dial safe. It's an actual safe. It's not a gun cabinet. Um, I think that's important to differentiate the, the two. Um, and then I've got another uh, smaller key safe. Like you could probably fit one or two pistols in that uh, kind of as a, as a travel safe. If I know I'm going out of town and staying at a, a hotel or a resort or something, I want to you know, lock them up while I'm out. Um, and to me, I have kids. I've got a, I've got a nine-year-old. Um, I, I think some, some sort of safe or, or lockbox or, well, hell, even a, even a gun cabinet, even a fancy furniture type gun cabinet. If something's got a lock and key, just to make it that much more difficult for your kids to get in, that's that's my primary concern is is children. Um, I mean, if a, a burglar comes in your house. You know, they're they're going to find a way to get in, or they're just going to carry the damn thing off if they really want it. Uh, so I'm I'm thinking more of a, of a family factor. I think uh, you've got to have them locked away, and then on top of that, I ha I have my my actual bedroom is dead bolted as well. I lock my door, so I'll keep your wife out. Well, that too, you know. or keep her in. Yeah. yeah, there you go, John. <laughs> You didn't need to whoa in the middle of your conversation there. For some reason, we went immediately from like 212 viewers down to 14 viewers in like in like one second. <laughs> <laughs> but then it shot right back up. So what I figure is when the chat went live, everybody refreshed to their page. Yeah, that's, that's usually like, what it happens. We're right back at. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. I have to try that. Whatever it takes, you know. Keep her in. Keep her out. Keep <laughs> I need one on our door because every time I'm having sex, someone will walk in and ruin it for me. <laughs> I'm not sure how to respond to such a comment. Uh, what did is, is Mavis trying to Yeah. I mean, what well, you and Matt do on your own free time is none of our business. There, there you go. Yeah, I'm done. Well, Matt's going to have to move to Washington with Yankee before they can marry. So start another channel. Never enough sex. <laughs> Matt moves well, up here. I can legally marry him now. Here to stay in Washington. I think that's pretty much a given, right? Never enough sex. Especially if you're married. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I can attest. Well, this topic <sighs> generated fast. Yeah, okay. Back to topic. <laughs> Back to topic. <laughs> um, I have a gun cabinet, kind of like a modular gun cabinet. You can, you can kind of fit it however you want. You can do 18 guns. 
or you can do uh, you can mess you know mix it up so you can put pistols and that's how I got it set up. Um, I don't on my house the way it's built. It's well, I guess they never thought about anybody putting a real gun safe or a real safe, a tall one. It can so I don't. If I think I put one upstairs, it probably fall through the damn <laughs> to the floor and up downstairs anyway. So I'm looking into coming a kind of solution. But either way, like Fallen Stone guy, what he said, uh, agreeing with him on that is yeah, you do gotta lock them up some, with something. Um, to where you have one key and either the, another person you really trust or you have a key hidden somewhere that you pretty much know nobody can get to. And that way you have quick access to it in case you do lose your key. Um, as far as secondary, there's nothing wrong with having a, maybe a safe somewhere else in the house. Keep, I like keeping ammunition separated from uh, the, the guns. I believe in that. Um, uh, that's pretty much me, man. Sorry. All right. Well, uh, me personally, I have a safe, and uh, I have filled it in quick fashion. Oh, hey, Bob's here. Hey, Bob. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I cuddle with my 870 every night. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, yeah, I, I just, you know, I, I lock up as much as I can in the safe, but everything else generally stays really close to me. Hey guys, how's it going tonight? What's good, up, man? Good. You know, everything's within at least a couple steps, if not arm's length, um, when they're not locked up. So I'm I'm good to go. Yeah, I just I didn't just kind of spin off real quick. Um, the uh, I definitely definitely always keep a firearm, you know, either on me or, or next to me at all times. I never lock all your firearms up because. I talked about that the other night. Even even when I'm sitting around the house in gym shorts, I got a little 380 in my pocket just because. That's what she said. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my uh, my theory or, or thought process is you know, if I'm downstairs <laughs> and someone kicks in your front door, yeah, you could have the best arsenal in the world upstairs, but the likelihood of you being able to retrieve that is well, slim to none. Well, so all I you think have to do is say. Excuse me for one moment while I go get some gun. <laughs> yeah. Right, I mean, that's logical. Home invaders, or else we all know home invaders don't mean you any harm, and they're good people at heart. <laughs> right, you can have them yeah. fill out the uh, will you harm me questionnaire while you yeah. get your gun out. Yeah, exactly. I would definitely say <laughs> never lock up your guns, because I do know people that uh, that lock up their gun at night. And I, Hell, I, I would think that would you be the one time. You mean their defensive gun? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. At your, yeah. Their defensive yeah. gun. They put it in the safe before they go to bed. And I'm like, really? That's Yeah, I know people mean. who put it in the safe downstairs and then go upstairs and go to bed. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, G-Webs. Well, I guess I got safes. Mm -hmm. You go got ahead. safes? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Edge was saying something. No, I was anyway. going to say I did with that. I mean, I, I, uh, I also carry a gun on me when I'm in the house at all times, but yeah. Do you, you all keep safes. any of the guns in your safe loaded? Hold on, let, let G-Webs get, get through. we get off topic here. Sure. I got safes just so that I keep them away from people stealing them or whatever, but I'm not. I'll definitely play a devil's advocate that I'd always stop before there's any kind of laws against having to have them in safes. I think that's a bad law. And I do have travel safes, again, just to keep people from stealing them from me. Sure. All right, so G. Lee, you jumped in late here, so we're asking um, if you have a safe in your home, and if so, you know, like if, how many, and if you think that's the what was what was the other part of that, Yankee? Like, what do you feel is the minimum safe storage in a home for firearms? All right, yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I guess I'm kind of in an interesting situation because um, I don't know. I've got about six guns, I think, right now, and most of them, all but one, are you know long guns. And, you know, I live by myself right now, so I don't have a safe right now. But I'll be moving here in the next month or so, and I'll be renting some storage space from somebody I know. And I'll be definitely getting a safe, you know, just to keep it in their house and have it all locked up. Mainly because, not that I don't trust them, but I really want them getting into them. <laughs> Do you have a solid mm, lock on your, uh, on your door to the apartment or wherever, your house or whatever? Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's in a, I guess it's in a locked closet, but... I guess it's technically a safe, but it's, I mean it's a locked closet. It's, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that's a, a bad way to go if you live alone. 
You know right. what I mean? No, there's, no there's nobody kids. that's going to be getting into it, so. Well, if, well, there's young kids at this residence, so I just leave the guns loaded all over the floor with the safety off for. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I got two different locking cabinets. One's a steel safe with two different key locks, and each key is a different set of teeth. So there's a two-key set to open it, and that's a steel one, and that's where the evil tactical and the high-value guns go. And then kind of all the cheaper guns, like the 22s and I think one of my air guns, are in a wooden display cabinet like you'd see. You know, like what what is, like, what what are common in, what used to be common in England, the wooden cabinets with a window in the front. I got one of those with a key lock that I store the rest in. As far as handguns, those pretty much just get stored in their hard cases with a padlock on them. I mean, a, a burglar is going to find a way to get your guns if they want your guns. My bigger concern is just making sure kids and people who aren't responsible with guns don't get a hold on them or at least can't just pick them up and play with them without anyone knowing. Mm-hmm. DB, you're up, man. Oh, okay. I was going to say, um, about five years ago when I bought my first handgun... Um, I just went to Home Depot and bought one of those Sentry fire safes, just whatever they had on sale there, and it was a combination. And for like a year or two, I had my I had two pistols in there. Um, and then I read that that is actually not a good idea because those things are filled with like moist uh, yeah, they're, concrete. They're, no, there's no airflow in those. They're not designed for firearms. Yeah. yeah so then I just uh, I switched to using like a Pelican case. Uh, a medium-sized Pelican case with the Pelican locks on there, because I was really just concerned with uh, if Is that someone just broke to keep in, Pelicans away from your guns. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> if a Pelican broke into my house, and I just didn't want to come home to say an intruder with my firearm, which was my biggest fear. Yeah, especially not a Pelican without, with your firearm. Yeah, because yeah. you don't have kids, right, DB? No, I don't have any kids. But even yeah, when, yeah, sure. when I have nieces and nephews, they'd come visit me. And even then, I, I would just hide the Pelican case, like, high up with two combination locks. Um, yeah. And, that, and I got away with that for a while, but I recently bought a safe because once I started, I got two long uh, firearms, and I got a shotgun and the AR. I really started getting paranoid. There was nothing I could do. At one point, even, I used to take the bolt out of my AR and put that in the safe, and like, in the small Pelican safe. Um but finally, I got a safe. I'm happy with it. It's a pretty cheap one, but um, it's at least 200 pounds, so no one's carrying it out. And like uh, most people say, a professional thief is going to get into your safe if they're um, they have a few minutes, you know, 10, 15 minutes, they might be able to get oh, in definitely. there. But that's not the the point. Is for some people who just break into houses and take televisions. These pe- those kind of thieves aren't going to walk out with a 200 and something pound safe. They're it, it's more of a deterrent than anything else. Yeah, yeah right. definitely. And those thieves that come in and see that safe and get scared because it's so ominous, they go out and don't tell any other criminals about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, 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 you know, that's true. Nobody ever talks about that, but <laughs> seriously, like that's not valuable information for them. They can tell that to oh, somebody sure who knows how to bust in a safe yep. or who doesn't want to just rip it through your wall. If you're letting people get in your house and get back out again, though, then you're safe is the least of your concerns because that means you Well, but realistically, most people get robbed, not burglars, right? Right. Yeah, and and there is potential for stuff like that to happen when you're not around. Yeah, I was just thinking, like, most of these um, home robberies here, they wait till you're... If they're going to wait till your home and do a home invasion, then, yeah, they're not going to be doing too well if I'm home. So uh, I'm just worried about if I'm not home... Most of these people just break in, steal some stuff, like a television, a laptop. They're in and out within, like, 15 minutes. They're not spending a whole, uh, you know, hour in your house. If so, that loud. Usually it's way less than 15 minutes, even. Right. I mean, yeah. I'd really have to be dealing with some, some really good uh, safe crackers, I guess. I'm not really worried about it. I'd say if you have a really, really big safe like Yankee and everyone breaks in, and someone breaks in his house and recognizes it and knows he's got a bunch of guns, they may tell the professional safe crackers... Is a burglar going to bother to try to get more people to come back to your house if he thinks there's nothing of value in your safe? Like if you cover it with Caltech stickers? That, that has got to be almost one of the most 
ridiculous paranoid arguments I've ever heard in my life. That's like saying if you put locks on your doors, bad guys are going to figure out, hey, that guy's guy got locks, so we should go break into his house. No, I can That's understand if you're on locks off your doors. If, but, if, uh, if I was on vacation or something like that, like for a long time, maybe, maybe I'd be worried. But I'm, you know, I'm I'm never home for like I'm never not away from home for more than like five six hours. I work from home, so. So that, we're going vacation? Well, that's the thing. Well, I think, that I do. Once, a, once every five years, I don't think it's one. The thing about that, I think that Yankee and I both have this this uh, deal where um, our actual home security system uh, has a contact on the safe. <laughs> so not only is it an alarm going to go off if they break in the house, but then if they actually open that safe door, that sets off another contact to the alarm system. Yeah. It's installed on the inside of the upper portion of my door right here. If anyone opens this door, for one, <coughs> it's, if, if someone opens my safe and I'm in the living room, I can actually hear my alarm system in the house go, door four is ajar. Yeah. <laughs> and it tells me like someone has opened the safe in my garage. Yeah, I got I got a girl that goes, front door open. Yeah. I think mine <laughs> says, when it opens this one, it didn't have a... You know, they have, like, pre-programmed names for things, and safe wasn't one of them. So there's one that says front door, one that says rear door, one that says window, lower window, and then this one just says door number four is a jaw. Well, it is open. That's what it says. Door number four is open. Yeah, I was going to say, one other thing is, I, you know, I have insurance from my house, and a friend of mine was like, what do you care? Why are you so interested in buying a safe? If someone steals a gun, just going to make an insurance claim. And and um and get the money, but at th at that point when I um like starting, what was like this Christmas, ARs were like going for triple what I paid for mine, you know, and yeah, and if you lot... could if you could find them, so that's why I bought a safe was like and, just and touching real quick on the insurance thing, be careful because a lot of times your your insurance policy will only cover about two thousand dollars of miscellaneous items if you don't have a separate addendum. St you know, uh, cataloging individual like guns or jewelry or whatnot. So right, and those type of additions typically are actually really affordable. Cheap, oh, yeah. Um, cheap. Yeah, I mean, wait, under under like fifty bucks a month or something like that. Oh, even super less, cheap. Even uh, less, yeah, yeah. Less yeah. Well, you know, it depends on the value you put on these things. For two hundred thousand dollars extra of coverage for my collectible stuff, including my guns, I pay an extra six dollars a month. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's totally worth getting that. Yeah, I have the I NRA. I have the NRA free policy on my guns, which I got just because it's free, and I know they're not going to pay me back if I ever make a claim on it. So there's really no point in it. <laughs> yeah, they just get a chance to send you assloads more mail than they yeah. already send you. And you get to exactly. carry another another card in your wallet, huh? That means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Yankee. So well, everybody else weighed in up to this point. Well, well, I took a look well except at the for the Canadian down. down here on the end, but he can go last because he's Canadian and nobody knows he doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> <But, clears throat> um, uh, I have a lot of safes. You know, I've got my giant, my big safe here. That's my primary storage for my firearms. I've got a quick access safe in the wall in the family room right next to my couch. I've got a safe under the sink in my bathroom. I've got a safe mounted next to my bed. I've got two safes in my car. I mean, I've got a lot of safes. I'm I'm a firm believer in locking things up. Uh, I don't ever lock up all my guns. There's always one on me or right at hand for me. But can you, uh, can you uh, talk slower? I'm I'm right here. <laughs> what? Hey, I'm was messing a joke. He was saying he he was writing <laughs> everywhere you hear safes were located. <laughs> I said but, talk uh, slower. I'm right here. Yeah. But I'll even give people my address if they want to try to get in my safe because. If you want to come try to get past my cameras, my security system, and my dog, and then me, and think you've got a chance to get at my safes, my safes are my last line of defense. Uh, never think of a safe as a first line of defense, because if it's your only line of defense, it's too easily overcome by almost any thief. It should be your last line of defense. Uh, now, what do I think is minimum storage for safekeeping of a gun? I don't think there is a minimum. Uh, or a maximum, really. You can do as much. You can build a vault. Or if, if you're a, two adult people, like if you say it's you and your wife or you and your husband or whoever in the house, and you're the only two adults in the house and no one else is there that's underage, and you want to stick a gun on a nail and on the wall, of, a loaded gun on a nail in the, on the wall of every room in the house, so be it. I mean, when I used to not have kids, I'd come home, take my carry gun off, set it on the dining room table, and leave it there till morning when I put it back on. 
You know, don't think anything of it. Now, a lot of people will say, well, what if someone breaks in your house and steals your gun? Well, then that person's a criminal, aren't they? And I'm not responsible <laughs> for what criminals do or what they do with stuff that they steal afterwards. That's as ridiculous as saying, well, what if someone comes up in my yard, steals brick, and then goes and beats somebody to death with it? Am I somehow responsible for that? No, I'm not. I'm not responsible for the actions of criminals. So I don't believe there is a minimum safe storage. Uh, now, if you have children, if you store your guns in a way that children can get to it, then you're an idiot. And I think if your children are ever harmed, you should be tra uh, charged with a crime Yep. for your child's life. That should be involuntary murder, and you should go to jail for the rest of your life, practically. But <clears throat> as far as minimums being established, uh, no, well, not by law. I don't agree with any legal minimums. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point. You know, uh, the, a lot of times people... My address is 1808 Southeast 176 Place. There you go. <laughs> um, I give it to anybody that asks for it, so I don't care. End up thinking that you know because there's a minimum, that's the way it has to be. Uh, you know, and and laws stating minimums generally are a bad thing because they lead to more um, all-encompassing things down the road. Yeah. Remember what happened to Iron Man when he gave his address out? Yeah, mm. <laughs> and that was so fucking ridiculous. It was like like Iron Man who designs all this stuff doesn't have a minimal air support around his house. Yeah. Man, no shit. Some little <laughs> rogue helicopter was able to blow his yeah, fucking some little helicopter. The, a helicopter that could not have even carried that armament and st stayed in the air. So yeah. he took out his house. Yeah. yeah, like he wouldn't have little drones flying around. You know, house, you if, know. if those helicopters would have actually had that armament in it, you would have been able to tell because they'd still be on the ground with the front of their tines on the ground spinning in a circle as they were trying to take off. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about cap laws? What is that? Child access prevention laws. I don't really agree with that because you know it's parents should be responsible. They shouldn't have to have responsibility uh, legislated for them. Now I do believe in people being responsible if their child gets to their gun. So I'm all for if say hey you know Billy Red, uh, Billy dumbass leaves his gun on his dining room table and his four year old shoots himself with it. I'm a firm believer that guy should go to jail as a murderer. Yeah. So, right. DC has uh, over 1,300 laws in regards to the cap laws. One of the it highest. is kind of a it is kind of a tough topic though because you know I do agree with things like I don't ever agree with laws that say you have to wear a seatbelt because I'm an adult and I'm an adult if I choose not to wear a seatbelt that's my choice but I do agree with laws that say you have to put your child in a seatbelt. Yeah, because they're right. dealing with someone else's law. They're, yeah, life. they're not an adult; they so, can't make that choice. So th this is one of those topics that I'd have to. It could be hours of debate with someone. In my opinion, could change one way or the other. And during that debate on safe storage of firearms with children in the home, but I, I don't I think, think laws are the. Well, Masada yeah. Ayub says that he was allowed to keep a 1911 45 in his desk when he was 12 years old, and he said he carried the gun outside the house when he was a teenager. So. Yeah, it's different look, times. Look where, yeah, uh, anecdotes, look where don't, lived, right? anecdotes don't change reality, and reality is it's not really safe to leave twelve year old up. I think any any law that dictates um, what you should do with your children or your own possessions, for that matter, I think that's um, that's a very slippery slope. And while there are some things that work out better for the the general safety of people, like seatbelt laws, I think have been relatively helpful, but you know, it's it's a very, very tough thing. Like Yankee Marshall was saying, you know, he, he feels that you shouldn't be dictated whether or not you should wear a seatbelt, but you should dictate that uh, you put a child seatbelt on. I mean, that's 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 hard for me to swallow. I I don't know. Oh, I think it's, I mean, because it's, it's child endangerment. Life and risking yeah, but at the same else. time, at the same time, shouldn't you be held responsible no matter what if you don't put that seatbelt on? So why why need right. why do we need a law that says you have to do it because that you should already know that you have to protect your child right because right. some dumbasses well, don't you know would that think, yeah you would well, think. yeah but some yeah. dumbasses also don't know that they shouldn't point a gun at their face and pull the trigger but they do it yeah well I think they know they shouldn't do that if you guys want to check these laws out go to smartgunlaws.org well now, you what was the you said it was a child accident prevention laws. Is that what that? Child yes. access yes. prevention. Oh, child access prevention. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, now, yeah. You know, one thing I am all for. I am all for states saying, "Hey, 
we would love for people who buy handguns to put them in a safe. Well, so probably we're doing just... something like a hundred dollar off on safes or no sales tax <laughs> on safes. Like our state doesn't charge you. If I go out and buy anything in this freaking state, it's almost ten percent sales tax. Wow. If I go out and buy this thousand dollar, you know, a thousand dollar safe like the one sitting next to me here, not a dime of sales tax on it because the state waives the sales tax on safe purchases. So I'm okay with things like that incentives. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, that's actually a smart idea. How about the laws just out of it completely, and if some church thinks that there's a problem, then they can buy safes for people. Say that again, do what? Leave the government out of it and let a church or yeah, community because, organization or somebody else buy the safes for people if yeah, they think because, there's a problem. Those churches are so notorious for just giving away money. Yeah, they're, they're terribly <laughs> generous, yeah. <laughs> they give away enough to keep their tax-free status and then... But yeah, I mean, well, I, no. think, I think if there were no government benefits being dispersed, then the people would put churches on a much higher standard for this. Uh, or church can just be a placeholder for any local civic organization. Sorry, you yeah. to say or your civic organization. Yeah. Your I'm all for someone starting up like a uh, charity fund, you know, like uh, Susan Coleman Foundation. That's just someone who decided, hey, I want to raise money for a certain cause. There's nothing wrong with someone starting up something and saying, hey, I want to raise money to provide people who can't afford safe safes. Yeah. Well, Isn't there know, a project to, to, be fair, to provide shotguns to people who can't afford guns? Mm -hmm. um, that's the same long time I there's, a, there's a program, I don't know if it's national, um, at least in, in this area, it's um, police uh, go around handing out locks for guns. Now, it's not a safe, but it is a step in that direction, I believe. Yeah. And, and trigger, I think locks are cheap. Right. Generally, you can get one. Even most gun shops will just give you one if you ask it. Ask oh, for yeah. it. They just got laying around. I mean, they they got so many of them from used guns and stuff like the that. Past like four firearms I bought came with one too. Right. Right. They're they're uh, new firearms by law, law have to come with it. I was about to say, is isn't that a law that if you ask for one, they have to give you one or something? Yeah. No, but it's a law that they no, come with like every they new come with one. Yeah. Yeah. They come with one. Okay. I, uh, I know um, that well, I, think I was some told agreement here in between some states and the government about providing those. Someone's oh asking God. who uses dehumidifiers in their safe. Uh, I do not use dehumidifiers. I use golden rods, which I guess are a type of dehumidif excuse me, dehumidifier. Left, uh, left, right here. Start with well, Bob. Yeah, we'll start with Bob. Sure. Yeah. Do you use I, a dehumidifier? I use, I use yeah. I use desiccant bags, so you can get really like the big desiccant bags. What size do you use, and what size is your safe? Uh, they're actually fairly they... small. 14, 14 gun and an eight gun. Either one pound bags, I guess. Wow. Okay. Are, is there any concern for you, like having your guns dry out? Because I know if you get drop the moisture level too far, you mm -hmm. can damage the wood on certain guns if it's not treated properly. Well, I haven't had a problem with it, but okay. And I just use golden rods. I use two. I use a big golden one at the front of my safe. And I have a smaller black one at the back of my safe to keep the air nice and toasty warm in there. And I've never, ever had a moisture problem. And I live in a rainy climate. so. Yeah, I have this um, something I bought from Midway. It's like a metal canister with like silicone gel. Whatever, it's some sort of blue yes. beads in it. Uh, so the ones that turn pink yeah. when they when they're exactly. done. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you can yep. shove them in the oven. But yeah. I am I was kind of scared. Like, wh what if that thing is sucking moisture into my safe? You know, I don't know. Is that possible? I, I have like, heard stories of that, but um, that's more so with like the uh, like damp. Uh, what are they called? Like rid or something? Oh like that, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You do know, that. like those canisters because they collect water, whereas. The uh, the silica gel tends to absorb it into the actual particulate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, a quick one on that damp rid. I bought a small bucket, like very small bucket, like this. Yep. So I put it in my air conditioner closet uh, where my water heater is, and within like three or four days, there was like at least four cups of water just sitting at the bottom of it. So you definitely definitely do do not put that in your safe because if it, if it collects moisture like that. And just sits there. That can't be good. Yeah, that's definitely not a good thing. Yeah, with those uh, uh the contestant packets, you uh, another thing where one of the guys guys turned me on to was uh, 
throwing it into your car or your garage when you're gone. If it, you know, if it's not, you know, if it gets hot in there, just throw it in your car where you're working. In South Texas, it gets so hot enough, you can bake cookies. So I don't see why I can't dry out the packets instead of wasting energy with the, with the oven. Yep. Or, or That's heating a up the house idea. in the summer. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. And it works. I did it. <laughs> nice. So where are we at? Eric? Mr. Eric? All right, I, don't use, I don't use any form of dehumidifier right now. <sighs> All right. I'm say the same thing as well. I mean, go. I don't know how much that's applicable to me since I don't have a safe, but... <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps desk packs in his pocket with his carry <laughs> <laughs> He keeps it in the bottom of the holster. <laughs> G-Webs, I think you're up, brother. Global warming has put me in a desert, so I don't need it. Fair enough. Fair enough. There you go. Um, I uh, just picked up something similar to what uh, Yankee has. It's made by a different company called Lockdown. It's you know it's a, a sub brand of some conglomerate. Like the people that own Caldwell also own Lockdown. It its uh, purpose is not a dehumidifier, like he said. What it does is it actually raises the temperature within the safe, and that changes the relative humidity because uh, warmer air can uh, contain more moisture per uh, unit or whatever. Um, so that's what I went with. I have a relatively small safe, but uh, I didn't like the idea of having to maintain uh, desiccant uh, packets and things like that. Even though you can go a long time in between, I just I wanted something I could just put in there and leave for a while and, and not really have to worry about it. I hear that. Now, I do want to say one thing before we go any further here, and Edge will be next, but if you have those desiccant packs around, make sure you don't let your animals eat those. Those things kill dogs every year. They're, those things are poison for dogs. I mean, they're not like poison poison, but they're bad. They kill dogs. The, the desk in itself is not poisonous, but the, the, they, it, it smells sweet, so they eat it, and then it block, gives them a bowel obstruction and kills them. So don't let them eat those things because they'll just swallow the whole package and then they'll, they'll get a bowel right. obstruction and die. Right. I thought they were like Pop Rocks. I was eating them. And, never mind. Yeah, no, they won't kill you. They're not <sighs> poisonous, but they're poison for dogs, basically. Just keep that in mind for you because they don't like – poison them like cyanide or anything, but they eat them, it blocks their intestines, and they die. If dogs die every year, it's one of the big causes of why they have the warnings on their packs. Mm -hmm. like avocado for parrots. Yeah. Alright, um, yeah, I, I use the packs. Um, I got to probably, I have to stack on ones that you can, um, you know, uh, reset them or re-energize them, whatever you want to call them, recharge them. And um, I got probably around six or seven of them. I use them in the mic ammo cans with my ammunition, and then I got some other ones. Uh, I'm in the IT business, so you tend to open a lot of hardware, and you get these big packets, like in, on the on the large server stuff. You get these huge packets, and they're just as good, and you grab those, and I have shit. I must have got like 20 in one job I did, and I have those in there spread all over the place, and I recharge them. You're saying, Cass, I'm sorry? Uh, I, was, I thought you were getting at the ones that... Uh... You plug into the wall after they get to like whatever point that they're full, so to speak. But I, I guess I was mistaken there. No, no, no. I just use the stack on ones that are they have a little like little label on them with the it goes from blue to pink or whatever. Right. Like right. That. Okay. Recharge them. I am looking at something a little more once I get the, the safe situation. I get a real safe and maybe something with the dry rods or or something a little more less maintenance. Right on. Yeah, I, I'm the same uh, same as you and DB. I I I got both the stack on with the little little you know paper packs that turn from blue to pink, and then I've got the little metal cans also. Um, just simply because where my safe's uh, located, I don't have a, a plug handy, so uh, I'm just going with the with the silicon packs or decadent packs and. That's funny you mentioned the computer thing because um, just uh, I don't know, last month, uh, one of our IT guys at work um, gave me a couple of those packs, something that came packaged in. He was like, oh, I put these in your safe, man. I was like, oh, no way. It's the same stuff. So mm -hmm. I was Yeah, I mean, they put cool. those, those little packets in everything, so oh. why yeah. not put them to use? I want yeah, to reply exactly. to Rich Turner, who says he just keeps his dog out of his gun safe. Well, what if someone breaks in and then your dog doesn't have access to a handgun? 
<laughs> so, there you go. You got to give the dog the combination. Yeah, that's the only other person in the house I trust with the combo to my main safe. <laughs> Remember, the dog just has to be 21 in dog years before you can allow him access. Yeah. Oh dear God. <laughs> oh. Uh, what are we on? Uh, dehumidifiers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you use a dehumidifier and uh, you know what kind and all that? Um, well, technically, right now I don't have a safe. Um, I do have a small little sentry safe or whatever handgun, but it's mostly it's got all my paperwork in there. But um, so right now I just lock up firearms with uh, cable locks, and I only have uh, I'm down to two long guns now and one handgun. That's that is depressing. Gunner. My wife's an handgunner, and I started off with like ten, nine firearms, and since I've been married to her, I'm down to three. But uh, so right now, yeah, I'm pretty much just uh. I keep them um, kind of close to the hot water heater, and this is something my grandfather taught me. If you keep near a hot water heater, uh, the warm air will circulate a little better, and it'll keep the moisture away from that spot, if that makes any sense. Like it's well, that's, drier that's, outside. That's, as long as it's similar. a gas heater. Yeah. yeah. That's very similar to the dehumidifier that Yankee and I have. Yeah, that's how that's always hard work. And my hot water heater is right next to my safe, too. So Boom. I keep yeah, right Double. there. There's a closet right there, so that's where I keep them in my extra bedroom. Well, someone cool. in the chat just asked, uh, who was it asked? It, uh, our artillery asked if safes are so airtight they need a dehumidifier. Uh, gun safes, and I always, and I'm often often questioned by people how they should make, what they should do to make their uh, gun safe airtight. That's what you don't want. You want air to be able to flow. You want the cooler, moisture air to be able to flow out of the safe. Yeah, you don't want, well. yeah, you don't want an airtight gun safe. That's a ticket for a uh, pitted and rusted gun. So yeah. you want airflow in your gun safes. Yep. Uh, I have a, a quick question uh, real quick for the guys on the panel. Um, those of you that do use a safe, do you have any way of monitoring the humidity, humidity levels within the safe? Um, you know, like a little uh, dial or anything like that? I've never put anything in my safe, but I've never had a reason to. But I mean, I've, I've thought about it a couple of times, like putting just a little sensor in there. But you can buy them at the gun shop. I mean, yeah. I, I recent the reason I asked is I, I recently picked up uh, a, like a little. I guess it's supposed to be an indoor outdoor thing, but I just literally stuck it in the safe just to monitor it in case something happens that I don't. I maybe didn't notice, and I, I notice a, a certain rise in the level. Then I, you know, can diagnose any problems. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that uh, I used to own a car that had a shitload of gauges in it. Well, not a shitload, but I, I like to be able to monitor things when, uh, you know, there's a lot of monetary value uh, in there. Or Fiesta. Well, um, no, it was an I was, FBI. <laughs> um, I actually have a little. I actually do have a little humidity gauge that came with my cigar humidor when I got that two years ago. So I could probably put that in there and see what the humidity is. Are you even old uh, enough to smoke? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm almost 21. Bullshit. Almost. Yeah, he is. He's just a munch kid. Just, just a Where's month that? and a half away, dude. As far as storage of handguns, one of the things that I thought was interesting here that might be interesting for protecting your gun from humidity if you don't have the dehumidifiers, there's an older guy I know who's a friend of mine, and he used to work for the U.S. Merchant Marine, and they kept guns stored aboard ship for security when they were at foreign ports. And he said that just because of the salt water that flowed through salty air that flowed through all the portions of the ship, when they were working with the oily parts of the vessel, like changing the oil and stuff in the vessel, they would keep the oil rags and then wrap the 1911s they kept on the ship in the oily rags and then put them in their storage lockers wrapped up in oil rags, and he said that kept all the moisture off of them for... <laughs> for keeping them you can buy impregnated like wipe type of towels and stuff you yeah they're like silicone cloths and stuff like that yeah, but I don't know I've seen socks. guns damaged by that kind of stuff yeah too, I've though. seen I've seen I have pulled guns out of safes that had those socks that had the same stuff in them they're like little gun cozies mm -hmm. and have to peel the thing off and be pitting everywhere the thing was touching the, the problem with those sock yeah. things is that not only do they contain like silicone or something like that but they absorb moisture because they're fabric yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just glues that stuff to the gun. So my opinion I mean, on those things, wrapping a gun in anything, 
don't wrap your gun in the thing. And the gun is embarrassed being in there, and it gets depressed, yeah. and it has no reason to live, so it withers away. I put gun socks, uh, gun socks on my rifle and my uh, 1022, you know, a couple rifles I've in there. I actually had a guy once send me a question on the, the firingline.com about his guns were sweating in his safe. And I was That's like, well, guns good. don't sweat. I was like, maybe there's some condensation. He's like, no, it's sweating. It's seeping out of it somehow. And he actually <laughs> I ended up having him send me pictures, and it was he was just over fucking oil in his guns. You know, you oil, oil them and you wipe them down, you put them in the safe, and then the oil starts to slowly weep out. Right. And he thought that that was his guns were sweating because his safe was too much. Oh, well, I mean, his guns need a regular exercise routine or they get fat. What's he complaining about? <laughs> I was, was going to say, I, I was, think uh, Brookstone sells gadgets that, you, you know, they sell all kinds of gadgets. You could probably get one that has a dehumidifier, a wireless kind of monitor you can put in the safe, maybe have it somewhere in the bedroom or wherever it is to keep your business. Yeah, I should probably get one of them. I was at a gun shop and I heard some guy talking about putting Vaseline during the winter on his on his weapons. Yeah, <laughs> God. Like, There's, no like, There's no need for stuff like that. Uh, I know. It's, it's, people are so cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Wipe them down. I can just stick it. You can, I dunk you can them just in stick frog it into, Just stick it into a case full of Cosmoline and seal it up. That'll keep it from rusting. The okay. funny thing to me is, a lot of people that like, go ahead, go ahead. No, I so said there's a lot of people that are making uh, their own uh, gun cleaning solvents and uh, lubricants and shit. They're all there's a lot of people talking about that in, in forums and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's really not enough variety out there. You kind of re have to resort to making your own these days. There's just <laughs> not enough oils. Yeah. People always ask me, like, what's the best oil? What's the best cleaner? I'm like, whatever one's on sale, because I've tried most of them. They're all about the exact same thing. I've just spent forty. The only thing difference is the so. smell. Yeah, that's true. That's 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 what you're paying for nowadays is this, yep. the lack of smell. Oh, I like the smell. I would never buy one that's doesn't have smell. <laughs> like right, let's move on to the next topic. Year. I think we beat safe to death. Uh, uh, let's move on to the next topic of backup guns. So we will do it again from left, from right to left, and say who here actually carries a backup gun either on themselves or do you carry a backup gun in your car? And do you think it's a paranoid thing to do, or do you think it's a smart thing to do? Well, I'm sure Bob carries like five. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There we go. So we'll start over there with USMC Mike. Mike. Carry my. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh... I the only gun I carry around anywhere that I go is my CZ. That's the only handgun I have. So net, I technically don't have a backup, um, but when I am going hunting or, you know, going on a long long hike trip or camping or something like that, and I bring my long gun with me, my backup will be my my handgun. But um, as far as in the car, I'll keep it in the glove box. Uh, when I come home, it's on my hip. When I'm inside, I'll either carry it concealed or open carry it. On my property, my my city has an ordinance. Even though my state is open carry, my city has an ordinance against it. Um, but I'm waiting on the nullification laws before I uh, get my concealed weapons permit. But uh, once I do get my concealed weapons permit, I'm actually thinking about getting some kind of like either stub nose revolver or like an LC9 or a car or something small as a backup to my CZ. If I could find a good holster for my CZ, that is. Now, what state are you in, just for curiosity? I'm in Missouri. Okay. Stone guys, MIA. So it's you, Ed. I carry one gun. I don't carry a backup. Uh, I don't think it's a bad idea, uh, by all means. Uh, if you, you know, you you're good with it, and uh, you know, it doesn't bother you. Definitely, um, a secondary piece doesn't hurt. But uh, no, I only carry one, 1911, or a Glock 22. That's brave carrying that 1911, man. Well, I carry I carry spent the West revolver too every now and then. Just it's the way I mix it up. I like to I like to pay all my guns give a little attention every now and then. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, me personally, I don't carry a backup gun, but I uh, I've considered it. I just don't know where on my person I would carry it. I don't like the idea of having an ankle holster, um, and I'm not sure I would be able to uh, deal with another one in my waistband. 
I'm already, you know, stretching the limits of the gear and stuff like that. Like, you know, I'm a big dude, so it's it's not the uh, I, I either have to buy bigger pants if I stick another gun in my pants or you know, find another way to carry it. And I don't I don't like pocket carry. I don't think that I would be okay with an ankle holster, so right now I'm just carrying one. G Webs, do you carry a backup? I believe you do, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, I carry a backup revolver all the time now. Sometimes more than that, and then I usually have one in the bag with some extra where, mags. Where on you do you carry that uh, revolver? Ankle or that's I like pocket. Yeah, I like my pockets, but I know a lot of guys that carry ankle. I would look into it because basically the nice thing about ankles, especially if you have a job where holsters are an issue at all, is that you almost always wear pants for business, for work and stuff. And right. You just get, you know, it's not that big a thing to have a small pistol on one side and you can off balance it with something else on the other side, like a mag or a tourniquet or something. I guess if you find one that's light enough, it wouldn't be really an issue. Just feel like a bigger socket or something like that. See, I like the kind that are sort of like a mouse pad material, or like a wetsuit material. They're really okay. nothing to them, whatever that neoprene. material's called, neoprene or what? Neoprene, yeah. Right, but some people think those are, but I keep my little uh, ultralight in there. But I've even kept a, a 27 in there. But anyway, uh, I know guys that like the, I forget what brand they are, DeSantis or somebody, whoever makes the one with the big sheepskin pad, and to me, that looks bulkier than the dang gun. But everybody's got their own comfort, I guess. And I, I don't wear mine as often as the guys that I know that do wear them all the time, so I guess maybe it's a comfort thing when you're wearing it every day. All right. Um, I'm not old enough to carry, but within the house, I'll you know keep my Smith & Wesson revolver next to the bed when I'm sleeping. And um, I guess I have a little add-on question here. Anyone who carries this backup in the car, like, what do you do for that? Um, what's your method of storage in there. I'll answer that when it's my turn. Okay. And um, I guess the only time I have a firearm with the car is, you know, if I'm going out in the woods or camping or something, I'll have a shotgun uh, behind like, the... <laughs> office, you go to the... I actually office. keep my car gun in a bag, so I have it in the car, and then if I need to, I can just drag it with me. Mm -hmm. to go. Okay. That's kind of weird because I'm not... I'm not 21 yet, but every state around my state, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, will allow an 18-year-old at least to open carry without a license, but Washington says you got to be 21. So whenever I'm out of state, I carry, and when I carry, it's just my single Model 10 revolver. I don't carry a backup. I don't even own a second handgun, so I couldn't carry a backup even if I wanted to. But if I own one, I don't know if I would just because it's a lot of, uh, it's some extra weight and extra hassle for something that you might are not likely at all to need, but what's the, you know, anyone else can do what they want. I'm just saying I don't see the need for me personally to carry more than one gun when I do carry. Hey Eric, what length barrel do you have on that Model 10? Five inch. Okay. I was going to say, I usually um, only carry one gun, and I just started carrying a backup magazine, but when I bought this um, this summer, like around uh, June, I bought the North American Arms, the mini mag revolver. And sometimes, it's like um, if I'm going out like at night to uh, like Gay bar. Walmart or whatever, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my, this has been my primary all. This has been my primary all summer. So this is this is like most people's backup guns. I'm only saying that because I'm pretty sure I saw you hey. there last weekend. Hey. hey! You get some free drinks at a gay bar now. Yeah. Well, I'm That's not gay anymore. I, I, I traded in my. Uh, I'm not gay anymore. I traded in my sig uh, rainbow. My rainbow finish. Oh, you traded in your rainbow sig? Well, yeah. That's, so I That's got almost out. a hate crime. Yeah. Saying you don't like the sig rainbow finish is a hate crime. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's a 239 <laughs> fierce. Oh, I guess it's me. Uh, I do not carry a backup gun. Uh, I don't even usually carry a backup mag. I figure my 15 rounds is enough. But uh, I, I don't ever see a problem with carrying a backup gun. I don't think it's paranoid because, you know, the way I look at it is carrying one gun could be easily considered paranoid. Carrying two is not that much further. So I don't see it as any more paranoid than carrying one gun if you want to say it's paranoid. Uh, I do carry a backup in the car, mainly in case I forget my everyday carry, which I just did the other day. I went out of the house with no gun on, had to slip my backup gun in, in my waistband. 
Did you feel naked temporarily? Yes, I did. When you realize, there's always that feeling when you're driving along and you're like, oh, crap, I forgot my gun. But with me, it's usually I have an empty holster where I've gotten up in the morning, put my holster <laughs> on, and didn't put the gun in it. <laughs> and, i got to have a left right if we get to the end of this one. Okay. Uh, and in the car, I keep, like I say, I keep safes mounted. I have videos on how I mount them in the car. I've got a safe that's just for a long-term storage of my backup gun, and I have another safe under the seat, which is just a cable lock safe, which is in case I ever have to take my gun out, like when I had to go to the courthouse the other day, take my gun out and put it in the little safe, lock it up. And if you want to have funny looks at the courthouse, have them do the pat-down on you and have an empty holster on you. <laughs> they ask yeah, a lot of questions. Right. One for the X, one for the X-ray machine. Yeah. So <laughs> they're like, "What is this?" I'm like, "Well, that's my holster." They're like, "You have a gun on you?" I'm like, "Well, it would be in my holster if I did, wouldn't it?" I was like, "It's in the car in a safe." And he's like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> hey, Yankee, is your backup gun the same as your everyday carry? No, my backup gun is something that's easy to carry. My backup gun is a little Smith and Wesson lightweight revolver. Very similar to what you bought as your first gun, I do believe. Okay. And uh, it's in a Nate Square Tactical holster because you know you never know what you're going to be wearing when you forget your gun. So that Nate Square Tactical, I could put it in if I had gym shorts on, I could wear it. Hmm. You know. So. If I could carry a, a gun, I would carry a backup, like something you know, a little automatic I could stick in a wallet holster or something. Someone briefly asked in the chat how I can own a handgun when I'm under 21, and this you is... you got to be 18. Uh, yes, you only got to be 18 in the state of Washington, to, and that's under federal law, too. Some states may have stricter laws, but under the federal law and the laws of the state of Washington, I can own a handgun and purchase it from a private party, but not a federally licensed dealer. So, like, if Yankee wanted to sell me a pistol, I could buy one from him, and I could own the gun, but I could not carry it loaded on me in Washington unless I'm hiking or at home or something like that. For, I think so, he's, smart enough. he's smart enough not to sell you a gun. I'm not selling him again. You could also receive it at this, right? Yeah. I'm also, hey, well, I'm just saying as an example, because Yankee lives in Washington, too. I already own a gun. I don't I'm need just, to buy one I'm from Yankee. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you want one, bad joke. Them, one bad Marine have to sell it to you. I'm not selling him one. It's a bad joke. Yeah, because he'll sell a gun to anyone if he sold one to Yankee. You just got to meet him in a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real late at night. Real late at night in a parking lot. I got. Yeah. I just think. Yeah, okay, I guess we got through that. So, what was your left yeah. or right G webs that you had? When you were talking about leaving a gun, I was thinking about uh, that same feeling. But what's worse, when you leave your cell phone at home or when you leave your gun at home? Okay, left or right. Let's answer that question. I can't uh, answer that. Pass. Uh. <laughs> Oh, that's a tough one, because I feel awful when I leave the house without my get my my, my uh, cell phone. But it's almost the same with a gun, so it's pretty bad both either ways. But the, that's the reason I always say about always carrying a gun, whether you need it or not, whether you think you're going to need it or not, because you know I have been places before and needed my cell phone and didn't have it and felt like fuck, why is this always happening to me? The world's coming to an end. You know, I don't deserve this kind of shit. It was just because I forgot my phone. Imagine what it'd be like if you went somewhere and needed your gun and didn't have it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say it's pretty bad either way because when I when I leave the house with a gun and I forget my phone, I often I'm like thinking to myself, what happens if I had to use this gun? And so that's exactly right. And I'm in the middle of nowhere and I don't have a phone. <laughs> I'm gonna wind up leaving the scene. I don't want to get charged. You know what I mean? I'm gonna wind up going to find somebody to call the police or whatever. I don't know. And then the you know vice versa. I know nine one one is a joke, so um, you know at least I have my gun. But I'm, that's what I'm worried about the most. You, you know what? Uh, never mind. I'll get to it when it's my turn. I carry a firearm with me whenever I legally can, and I don't feel comfortable without it. I also don't like not leaving without my phone. But actually, sometimes I really like having my phone turned off so that other people can't bother me while I'm out doing my business. For so, like, I'll carry my phone with me, but turned off, so that way I can call. But you know, but no one can bother me. So, don't you think that's selfish? Very. <laughs> um, I guess I'm not all that attached to my cell phone. Um, I never really thought about it the way that you know uh, some of you guys said about having to get into a situation where you might need your cell phone, but, you know, 
there's plenty of days where I just leave the house without my cell phone just because similar to what Reagan just said about I don't really want people getting to me when I'm doing stuff on my own. But, um, yeah, that's just what I have to say. Well, the short answer is the phone because I'll turn around and go get a phone. I'll figure, you know, I've only forgotten a gun a couple of times, but I don't turn around and go get a gun. I will turn around and go get a phone. Yeah, for me, um, I don't leave the house without a phone. If I do, I will, like d Web said, I will spin around and go get it. Um, I, I From time to time, if I'm just going somewhere quick, you know, locally to the grocery store or something, I may not bring a gun. So I, I guess it's worse to leave without a phone, but that rarely happens. Now, what I was going to say earlier real quick is that if something happens and you do have a gun but not a phone and you're somewhere in public, somebody's got a phone. Don't worry about it. Somebody has one. No, no, but damn, you want you do not want somebody else calling nine one one for you. You can't. Assume yeah, but they're it, just throw obviously you there it's phone. a worst case scenario. But if yeah. if that happens and you don't for whatever reason, somebody's got one. Well, you know, I can say know. honestly, and I'll just add this. So I got chicken on my fingers. I have been in a situation before, and G Webs knows exactly sure. what I'm talking about, where I probably would have lost my carry permit. If I hadn't called 911 first, because I was the first one to call 911. When the police arrived, they assumed I was in the right, which was they were correct. I was in the right. The other guy ended up getting arrested. So, having your phone is very tactical. There's a very tactical reason to have your phone with you too. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I, I would say that all the places that I've actually been able to carry a firearm are places where I don't get any cell phone reception. It's like I spent a week in Montana just about a month ago, and I spent that whole week open carrying everywhere, and it's like everywhere outside of the town of Polston where I was staying, like outside the city limits, I couldn't even get a cell phone bar. <laughs> Does that make it more important to have your gun if your phone can't access the... I keep a backup phone in the car. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's smart. Well, just, yeah, Seriously, just buy, one a, of those, buy a satellite phone. Yeah, one of those $20 ones. Yeah. Well, you could also you no, could also just satellite. Those a, are too expensive. Just the little ones at the dollar store that are throwaway phones. Yeah, well, you could also get yeah, like the prepaid cell phone, like G Web said, because it'll call nine one one. You know, it'll access nine one one when you call those numbers. Yeah, with well, the car charger, it doesn't even matter if it goes dead in the glove box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but that's good. That's a good thought. Well, um, as far as me, again, uh, like without the phone, because I'm kind of a news junkie guy um, and information. I feel because I do use a smartphone um, that I really the little dull times where you're just like yeah, I got need something to do so I'll go look up the news or see what's going on with this or check my mail. The phone is the one I'll definitely turn around immediately even if I'm like 10 miles away from my house or 15 I'll turn around and go get my phone. And the Very other reason is I, 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 I got a nine year old yeah I got angry birds. I have a nine year old and I have some teenagers also and you, it's it's the oddest time when you get that phone call so you're like. At work, putting something away, and then all of a sudden, yeah, calling you from the school. Your daughter got sick today, and then you're like, oh shit. And um, you know, I have to have my phone on me. The gun, I I will go back for it, but it's it's not the priority as far as me as I'll pick the gun over. I'll pick the phone over it. Still, and, uh, still on my eight. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I usually don't carry my gun everywhere I go. Um, most of the places I go is, is to college, and we can't carry on campus anyway, so I usually do not take my weapon with when I go there. Um, but as far as cell phone and gun, I'd say it, it would probably be worse for me to leave my cell phone at home just because of that fact. Um, I have kids and stuff like that, so I, I need to be able to get a hold of my, my wife in case something happens. But uh, So my cell phone would definitely be worse, I guess, to leave at home. I think Bob did something rude to his microphone. It wasn't me. <laughs> I think they wanted your uh, M14, Bob. Yeah. The Chinese are coming to take it back. Uh, they can take it from my warm, helping hands. It's a Canadian version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here, here's my M14, okay, buddy? <laughs> yeah. 
There you go. Well, hey, probably, can you make me another one? <laughs> well, it's probably a good idea. Canada would probably prosecute you if you actually used it to fight invading soldiers against Canada. So, uh, yeah, it, but no, at that beer. point, I'm pretty sure they'd be they'd be happy for any guy who could carry a gun. There's not that many of us, eh? You're telling. <laughs> and Ga- Gavin Ghost brings up a good point too in the chat. Um, an old phone that's that doesn't have service anymore. As long as the battery's good on it, you can still dial 911. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Most of the most of the phones are hooked into a system where you can dial emergency calls on it, regardless if they have service or not. Yeah, yeah. I found out you can also still upload stuff to YouTube because my eight-year-old brother, back when he was six, got a hold of his brother's old cell phone and started uploading YouTube videos because he. It was still working on our Wi-Fi access for our house. Oh. I had to take them all down. There's still one on my channel. But he's got one video of him out in the front yard shooting a cat pistol that his buddy next door helped him film when they were both six. So. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. cool. The YouTube generation. Yeah. Well, he's watching his dad. Oh, yeah. He's, he always comes down like, I want to make a video. Tom, quit trying to horn in on my... Right, uh, we get all the way through that one? Yep. Well, let's cover the last part of our scheduled chat, and then we'll get into the open chat. There's a couple of juicy topics for the open chat, so it's probably going to be kind of a <laughs> mean-spirited open chat tonight. But uh, the next topic is home defense. There's going to be two main questions. First question is we're just going to go through quickly and say, what is your preferred gun for home defense? We'll start with Bob. 12-gauge shotgun. Pump or semi-automatic, either one. My home defense weapon is... Why did my thing go... Okay. My uh, home defense weapon is a uh, high-capacity 9mm pistol, a PX4 Storm. Um, mine is... Any, um, a four, I'm going with 45 ACP most of the time just because I'm afraid of like over-penetration because, I, like I said, I live in a condo. An apartment building, so that's what I'm worried about the most. Double I figure that for, yeah, heavy, heavy and slow 45 won't won't over penetrate like a nine millimeter plus P that I have or 40. Double barrel shotgun, so I can fire two shots off my back porch and that'll scare the burglars away. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, just my. Just my regular, just my regular revolver, and then a family member's AR-15. I keep with a loaded magazine and a clear chamber, in a cabinet that I can quickly access with a key. I always keep in my pocket. So, I got a backup gun, which is an AR with a mounted light and red dot sight and a foregrip. But normally, I just carry my 38 on a holster with me on my hip, or I keep it on a table or counter next to where I am at all times. Do you wear pajamas with feet? <laughs> <laughs> Pajamas, I grew out of that years ago. Okay. So like actually. last year? <laughs> <laughs> he said years. It was the year before. <laughs> he finally grew out of them, but unfortunately they were the ones his mom bought him when he was six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just mean. <laughs> uh, it's like funny, it but it's mean. mean. Uh, sweaty feet in the morning. It's bad. Oh. Where do we get to here? Who's next? Uh, it's me we're, right now. We're on to bird guy. Yeah. <laughs> Pigeon. Um, I guess I use a 12 gauge pump. Um, Remington, 8, Remington 870, but it's kind of unwieldy because it's got the 28 inch, you know, field barrel on it. So. Jesus I'll be... Christ. <laughs> get a got, hacksaw, you gotta, brother. Get a hacksaw, man. <laughs> you guys um, can just use a hacksaw on yours. I have to take it to a gunsmith to get that done. You have to. It's required by law, mm-hmm. even if you take it down to the legal limit. Mm-hmm. Is that for any <laughs> modifications or? Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, it sucks, man. Um, but yeah, I'd like to switch over to some sort of some uh, handgun. I guess right now all I have is that revolver, but you know, it's a lot more maneuverable. <laughs> Clock or an AK, depending on the situation. Uh, I have an HK-45 or an 870 12-gauge Marine Magnum. Uh, all right. Um, I kind of spin it between Glock 22 or 1911. Um, the 12-gauge is cool. I like having it, but uh, I don't have it ready all the time. I'm, it's not that far away, but uh, I like using handguns. 
for that for that purpose. So was the question home defense weapon? I missed the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. what what do you use for home defense? All right. Well, my my primary would my Glock 19 is what I you know keep on me or near me. Um, if I have time to make it to the safe, um, I'm either gonna pull out the AR or the 12 gauge. I got a Remington 870 police magnum. So, either one, depending on how I feel. Yeah, for me, it, uh, it's it's going to be my CZ-75 currently in my 40. That's pretty much the only non-over-penetrating uh, option I have. I have kids in the house, house so uh, I, I don't think a, a buckshot <laughs> would be a great option, um, especially because I have five kids. But, uh, if you don't, if you don't think buckshot's a good idea, why do you think... A forty is a good idea. Yeah, no shit. Well, the reason because I'm not trying to be a dick, but no, I mean, no. they're, both, they're going you, through walls. Oh, you don't have to try. Well, <laughs> the forty Smith and Wesson was designed to be short and wimpy. Obviously, it was a Smith and Wesson no, cartridge. That was a misnomer. Oh, oh, oh. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. the FBI says the forty was designed to be not an overpenetrating round or whatever from the ten millimeter. No, but, they, no, the 40 was designed down from the 40 that from the 10 millimeter that their female agents couldn't handle, but it was designed to be a far more penetrating round than the 9 millimeter. Okay, well, with the hollow points that I use, they, <coughs> I don't know. To me, it just seems a little bit safer than using. He just doesn't like his kids. I think it's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'd, I'd rather have one projectile going than you know what I'm saying nine. Right, and know, as long as you're comfortable with that, then you're good yeah. to go. Yeah. I'm, and I, I mean, I'm better with my shot placement on a 40 caliber pistol than I am with you know just saying grabbing my shotgun, pumping it, and then blowing some dude away. And right. But uh, I mean, I do want to get a high capacity nine millimeter for home defense for that reason, and I want to get some of that USM USM four rounds, um, that ammunition that's that Yankee yeah. and uh, OBM have been promoting yeah. lately or whatever. Better buy it now. They're going to make it illegal, aren't they? Yeah, they're probably going to try eventually. They'll have they're, to they rebrand it and put it back out after under something. They'll either else. make it illegal or Yankee will buy it all, but either way, you better buy it now. <laughs> I don't. What so grounds do they have to make 20, that illegal? So far, I've only got about 20 boxes of it. So. <laughs> but yeah, my SAS is not an option, um, and that's the only other rifle I have. Yeah. Uh, like Twelve gauge is good with birdshot though for home defense, just because you it is it's like a glazer round at short range. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I don't know. I've seen I, birdshot go through turkeys and just watch them stare at the person. You know what I mean? Or rabbits. You know, I've seen people hunting with birdshot, and I, and I've seen the devastation it has on the human body, how it just bounces off some of the bone structure. So, yeah. uh, it blows a crater in them. Yeah, I mean, up close, yeah, it'd probably be definitely well effective, but, you know, you're 30, 20 yeah. feet away or whatever, you might... Yeah, but in, in, the house, in your house, in your house so you're, you're never going to be 20 or 30 feet, feet away, yeah. You're going to be 10 feet and away yeah, and at that range. I, I do have not, three magazines oh, how, do you know? how do you know he doesn't have a mansion? <laughs> well, okay, I don't know that. But if <laughs> he's got five fish. kids, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. When he comes down to the foyer, it might be another 40 yards to his front door. <laughs> <all>, you know. <laughs> He's got to go past the service order to get there. Yeah. So, I mean, how often would you actually be shooting? He just keeps mistaking his butlers for home invaders, and that's going to get him in trouble. But you know what's funny about that, too, is I actually (laughs) set up my kids' rooms where their beds are away from my line of fire towards the front door where normally my line of fire would be. I actually set up like that. Um, I don't know if anybody else has ever thought about that, but that's a major thing I did whenever we moved into the place. Was mainly for that reason. I, I I keep their you know their beds and stuff like that. So if they're sleeping at night, you know somebody's trying to crow by my front door. That's where all the you know I'm gonna be shooting my lead at. So yeah, yeah. But uh, my I live in one of those homes where all the bedrooms are upstairs, pretty much. And you walk up, you're you know a corridor and all in three bedrooms, and the restroom. Everything's downstairs, so it's a safe area, assuming you don't shoot up. <laughs> Which someone did here, and that's where you don't want to fire a warning, Joe. <clears throat> like that idiot, in, like that idiot who used his AR to help himself up off the couch the other day and shot up into the ceiling and killed the girl in the apartment upstairs. The girl. Oh, wow. So. Well, that's it. We gotta ban those evil high ca- high power assault weapons for public safety. Mm-hmm. Here's Morgan was right. 
Was that in your your state, Yankee? I think it was. I'm not sure, but I think it was in. I thought it was in Oregon. Yeah, does anybody Oregon. live in a Does anybody live in a state that has a duty to retreat even out of your own home? No. Do, do one of those exist? Yes. Yes. Is that New Jersey and New York? Yeah, Only that's not something even like 35 states yet. have it. So not even Canada has down. that. Not even Canada has a you know that you have just, to retreat out of your home. Some states by some just states process. by absence by absence of law that say that you do not have a duty to retreat, they do assume that you have a duty to retreat if at all possible. So. Right. Well, it's not that there's Canada. a law saying you have to retreat. It's just that they will charge you as a criminal when you defend yourself, and then you have to prove that you're innocent or that you're acting in self-defense. You're basically a a murderer being tried as a murderer until you can prove it was self-defense in those states. I was going to say yeah. with Bob, he brought up um, Canada, and I was following the case of, uh, what was his name, Ian Thompson? Are you familiar with that at all, Bob? Uh, is that the guy that uh, they tried to firebomb his house? Yeah, some people tried to firebomb yeah. his house, yeah. and he yeah. fired at him with a revolver. And, cause I no, thought he fired at him with a shotgun. He, uh, he didn't fire at them, he fired a warning shot. And, uh, yeah, they tried to arrest him for uh, improper... Uh, Storage of a firearm and stuff, but well, I mean, that's what I heard was that yeah. the uh, court dismissed the charge of you know shooting to defend his home, but then the prosecutors tried to argue he didn't store his gun properly because he had time yeah. to get it out and load it. Or something. Yeah, well, yeah, they they threw that out too because in Canada it is legal to like have a gun sitting on your kitchen table. That's that's fine, you know, as long as uh, there aren't children around and as long as the uh, the ammunition isn't sitting in it. Can't have it sitting loaded, but you can have the ammunition in a, in a you know a locked cupboard or something. So if you have a Canada legal AR-15 with a five-round magazine loaded in your back pocket, you can carry the rifle around your house and then. Uh, no, you can't carry the, <laughs> the you can't carry the uh, ammo with you unless you're out going hunting. No, oh, okay. But if you do get you know somebody oh somebody's trying to kick in my door, you can run to your to your cabinet and unlock it, and take your five rounds out or whatever. As you're see, yelling, wait a minute. Well, yeah, exactly. But, I mean, the thing is that, uh, see, the nice thing about shotguns in Canada is they're not limited to five rounds because apparently they're not as dangerous as a rifle. Well, when we go hunting here, you have to have a, you have to have a banana plug in there, a plug that limits it to three. You can take the plug out when you got it at the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, with shotguns, yep, yeah, same thing here. Not enough odd. You got to have that plug in there. You get caught. Mm -hmm. It's a hefty little fine they give you. Yep. I want to. I want to make a comment on some on a comment someone made here. It's not going to be a left or right. You're can just weigh in as they see fit. Uh, when the pen says, "I wish people would stop worrying about over penetration." Now, generally, I agree with that. Now, I don't agree if I'm shooting at someone in the hallway and my kids are on the other side of a wall. But one of the things that really bothers me a lot is people worry about like in their carry guns and stuff over penetration. Over penetration is to me one of the most statistically unlikely things to be a factor that if you're limiting your ability to defend yourself over the to, to uh, defend yourself well over the fear of over penetrating then you are handicapping yourself for no reason you might as well decide well I'm only going to carry ammo you know that uh, can survive meteor impacts if someone drops a meteor on me because that's about the kind of thing you're worrying about it's I've seldomly ever seen cases of over penetration being a problem I've seen cases where there's a, there was a case here locally where someone shot a guy in a car, shot through his neck, hit the girl next to him in the head, the bullet didn't even penetrate her skull or it barely broke the skin, you know, so it slowed the bullet down that much. But it's just one of those things people worry about that's not really a factor, if you ask me. What right. do you feel uh, in that same regard? How do you feel about um, penetration depth? Now, I, I know the quote-unquote FBI standard is 12 inches on ballistics tests. Do you feel that that's a, a justified thing? Anybody well, if it's good enough for the FBI, it's probably good enough for the average concealed carry citizen. Yeah. Well, I, I always wondered about that. That's a good. I'm glad you brought that up, Chaos, because I mean, if you if you think about it, the average the average torso is way less than twelve inches in, in depth. Well, not you know? everybody's. Some well, I know. I said, some I said the average. Twelve inches. Yeah. Well, I said the average. Yeah, okay. I mean, well, I mean, average, my, average, my main yeah. question is where the average Ethiopian, did that average American. <laughs> Well, that's what I've wondered because it seems to me that if 12 inches is a standard average. Yeah, that a would ballistic be gel medium. going right through. Right, that. right, right. That's that's what my question, G. Webs, is. Where did the 12 inches come for that particular test? Because I know that they have to equate in bone and different densities of uh, tissue within the human body, 
um, or you know maybe animal or whatever for ballistics testing, why is it a standard of 12 inches for ballistics gel medium? I don't, I just, I just don't know. Well, I mean, if anyone's ever shot up, you know, a, just an old beef or pork carcass or whatever. Are you asking why that, the FBI needs to require that, or why just in general? No, no, like why? Well, I just don't. I, I'm interested in finding out where that number came from, like how they arrived at. Okay, with this particular type of medium at this calibration, we're going to set it well, at this. A nine millimeter, a nine millimeter is going to go through a pistol round is going to go through a lot more than twelve inches of ballistic gel. They usually go through. That's like a six really, feet of really them. vague claim to make. Yeah, there's a lot of different grains. There's so many factors that go into how deep a round penetrates, yeah. and it can vary average, from round to round. But your average, your average nine millimeter, 115 grain full metal jacket, a fairly standard round, will go through like eight of those one foot blocks of ballistic gel. But why are you firing one full metal jacket in a defensive situation, uh, other than in a 380? Well, even if you have a hollow point, it's going to penetrate ballistic gel to some. I mean, I've I've seen hollow points do four one foot blocks of the ballistic gel. For I mean, the ballistic gel does not offer that much resistance to the bullet. It's supposed to be one twelve foot block is supposed to represent like what 150 feet of air at average. So I mean, the ballistic gel test. I'm not. I don't know exactly what points people are trying to make ballistic gel, but someone mentioned 12 inches of penetration, and they they can't be talking about with ballistic gel because I think just about any round from a regular power handgun will go through I think a lot more you, I think you need to do some more research on what you're talking about right now. Yeah, you're talking about six foot blocks or something. Yeah, I don't six, know. What anyway, the hell ballistic blocks. gel is just because you can't you can't just always shoot at a pig at some perfect angle, and you can't shoot at a cadaver, right? So they're going to need something to test on. It's a so right. control test. It's just right. a consistent test that anybody can mix. That's consistent or that you know same thing no matter where they are, and they can shoot their bullet into it. I right. suspect the 12 inches probably came from back in the day of their military or somebody did testing, and they probably just shot the bullets of the day, and, you know, when they that averaged them all bad. out, that was like oh, some gosh. medium or some... Right, right, right. That makes a lot of sense. Is. I suspect it's probably old, though, because, like you say, there's a lot of technology gone into the bullet shapes and all that now. Right, yeah. and that's, you know, in, in my own personal testing, I find that I'm not sure that I agree that that's the be-all, end-all distance, you know, because there's a lot of other factors, especially mm -hmm. now with the advancements in bullet technology, you know, different shapes, um, different hollow point technologies and things like that, the way the shells open, whether they split or whatever. Um, I find that there are maybe, like, you can't, you can't measure pain with ballistics gel, no. and, you know, most people can't afford to measure um, deformation of tissue and things like that on a regular basis, so... Ballistic gel, while it is a good medium, it's it's unfortunately not a be all end all. It's enough cowbell. Yeah, there's no way for the ballistic gel to incorporate that a Glock actually shot it, so it can't be realistic. <laughs> right. Now, uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm liking this ammo that I've seen, this Liberty ammo, because you know there's all you can always ask someone, which would you rather have? 14 inches of penetration with a with a with a ball point uh, with a piece of ball ammo. Or would you rather have 11 inches of penetration into a torso with a 4-inch spread? Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Which is going to cause more pain, which is going to cause more likely damage, which is more likely going to debilitate the person permanently. Whatever does the most body cavity destruction, in my opinion. Yeah. So, I mean, if I've got a 4-inch spread of shrapnel going into someone's body, that's a much larger chance I'm going to nick a artery, a lung, a heart, you know, uh, liver, something that's going to bleed out in a minute or so. Well, like my ex-wife used to say, two inches could be deadly in the right place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Yankee, something that I find very interesting about that Liberty Ammo, um, it was in TN Outdoors 9's test that he used that stuff, and the, the base, which penetrated the farthest into the, the I guess, the gelatin, uh, it w only ended up weighing like 30 grains at the end of it. I'm not Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% set on how I feel about that just yet. Um, I'm hoping it to test it myself. Let's just say this. If, you're, if your kidney gets punctured by a bullet, it doesn't care if that bullet weighed 75 grains or 30 grains. You're still right. bleeding out the same size spot. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's I, I haven't settled on a, an opinion on it yet, I guess. 
I mean, I he's asked, banking on it being basically like a little fragmentation grenade. Yeah. So it hits and, and it throws right, little pieces right. all over the place as opposed yeah. to one just tunneling its way through. And we're, yeah. we're a very medical family here. I mean, we've got two doctors and several nurses in our family, and I've talked to all of them, and every single one of them agrees that it is better to do to nick an artery and several other organs than it is to push a bullet all the way through somebody. Right. Oh yeah. But I think just the the pure the pure velocity and and hydrostatic shock that you're going to encounter with that round hitting and fragmenting, even if it doesn't get much penetration, if you got five or six inches of of huge you oh, yeah. know, wound cavity, then, yeah, I'm with you. I think it'd be much better than... I'd rather rip, you know, I'd rather hamburger somebody for 10 inches deep into their abdomen than I would push a bullet right through their side. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I can tell you from deer hunting that that's definitely true because there's been so many times that, you know, it's gone straight through the deer and we never found it. You, you might see a small little blood trail and it's, you know, and it's, it's gone because it, the wound closed up or whatever. A lot yeah, of people who test ballistics on handguns... might be on meth. A lot of people who test ballistics on <laughs> handguns, they forget something. They forget that they are not dealing with a living organism when they're testing on that gel. That gel is not reacting to impact. That gel is not reacting to pain. That gel is not reacting to a lot of factors. So they get tied up on, well, this one went 14 inches deep. It must be the best. Or this one went 16 inches deep. It must be the best. This one only went 12. It's not worth anything. You forgot there's organs in there. Now, it would be better if we could make gelatin things that had organs, and you could see, like, bullets going through the gelatin and not touching any of the organs in the body, the primary organs, and then see the, the ones that send the shrapnel in, like, oh, look, there it punctured the kidney, there it punctured the liver, there it punctured the lung. You know, that would be a better that. test. It's just really, really complex to yeah. do on a regular <laughs> basis. I mean, it, you would have to get some t kind of laboratory with a consistent testing pattern in order to replicate that for the same rounds, you know, the exact placement and things like that. Yeah, that'd be a ton of money to do that. Huh? I mean, it's it's just the, really complex. Did I miss right? much on the overpenetration topic? Because it suddenly went to uh, ballistics. So I didn't know if I missed anything. Well, that's part of the overpenetration okay. topic is, you know... Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, uh, Mythbusters has done... They use that... Um, I can't remember what medium it is, but it's it's something. It's got to be tougher than ballistics gel, even. But they make that dummy out of some type of. No, that's buster. buster. It, yeah, the it depends on what test they're doing. If they're shooting it, they're using ballistics gel. Okay. If they're doing something else, like um, like they put bones in it and they're doing like a bone break thing, yeah. typically it's a little yeah. bit denser material. Yeah, like yeah, something yeah, like that. What's that? that, that way, what's like. that dummy they use on that show where they buster? Like, like they know they where they come back where they pit. Like ninjas versus oh, gang members warrior, or whatever. Ultimate, yeah. warrior, Ultimate whatever. warrior or something. My son watches that. They've always got that dummy made of like gelatin that has bones yeah. and everything else. He has blood. He has it. blood and shit. Yeah, right. he has yeah. Blood. Nah, that would be cool. But yeah, if they could do something like what Mythbusters has with that little bit more dense material, and then because they got the mold, and they you know they could mold it and just put the organs, you know, in you know anatomically correct, and then pour that stuff in, and they could replicate five or six of them. That would That's be pretty cool. Expensive stuff, though. That, those uh, stuff they use on that show, that warrior show. I saw that one dude, man, go at it with a knife, and they're they're going against uh, the Israeli guys, the commandos against uh, Israelis versus seals. Yeah, seal. And you see that dude yeah. go at it with that knife, man. That black dude tore it up. Like, yeah, Christ, that was with a, a lock blade. That wasn't even a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, folding. It was folding a folding knife. That's yeah. a brown guy to uh, Biker Bob there. Someone asked yeah. me why don't I switch to a forty-five and have he a wasn't around, air block. If what I said was true about the spread, all right, okay, it's quiet now. Uh, forty-five. If you hold a forty-five next to it, you're statistically looking at not much of a bigger space. Especially if that forty-five doesn't expand as well because it's moving slower. I would rather have a faster moving round like a nine millimeter that expanded and, and even fragmented better than I would the slower moving 45 that may not as expand room. Plus capacity. Okay. With the 45, you right, mute yourself and you're not talking. It's either cowbells or baby talk. One or the other. I am muted. We just heard someone go, ooh, ooh, on your thing. Well, that's not me. It might have been Mike. He, his kids no, stayed. I watched his little thing. No, all my kids are gone right now. I watched I'll his be, little thing oh. go up and down as it was doing it. So. Hell yeah, you got a bachelor night, huh, Mike? Yeah, yeah um, you got me some beer yesterday. I hear you, brother. Right on. Say it again. Want to check your basements, don't go. 
Oh, yeah, it could, it could be that shit. Oh, Stone guy, yeah. They, they might yeah, have got the gag out of their mouth. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't fed her today. She might be kind of pissed. Huh? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Okay, we have one more topic on the uh, home defense, and then we're going to move on to open chat unless someone else has a topic. Uh, well, I guess that would be open chat. Uh, weapons light on your home defense gun. Where does it belong? On your weapon or in your hand? Or both? When it that comes is definitely to you, Eric. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I saw it that time. Both. Both. Let's go right, left, right, right to left. My eight-year-old has to come home. He's staying at his grandparents. He's home. I'll go first. That's what that phone call was a minute ago. All right, sure. Mike, go ahead, brother. Yeah, sure, uh, right to the... weapons light for home defense. I do have a light that's a de little detachable one. It's an NC Star cheap one. It works well. It stays on when firing. Um, I've had no problems with it yet. Uh, obviously I haven't had to use it in my home as a home defense, but I do like it on my weapon for two reasons. Um, I used to like it better in the hand, um, but that that really limits you to kind of one hand on the weapon, so to speak, so you can't really get, you know, the most effective grip that you need. Plus, I do like having a free hand if I need it. Like, let's say a kid just runs out in front of me. One of my kids is freaking out, runs out in front of me. Um, and I got some guy at gunpoint. Obviously, I'm gonna use my my non you know my non dominant hand to grab my kid and push him back behind me. Um, so I do like having that free hand to whatever to manipulate whatever I have to do. Uh, we Plus, know you're gonna shove the kid at the attacker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, just just for anything really. I, but still, to be yeah, able to maintain fun. a light on my weapon. Um, if I keep my house completely dark for that reason. I want the guy to trip over everything before he gets, you know. I want him to wake me up pretty much. Darkness is a bad guy's friend. I know when people think that just because, oh, I know my home. I haven't. No, they're they're good at chasing homes and. Yeah, but darkness I got five is a bad guy's friend. They leave toys all over the ground. I pity the fool that walks through my house at night. <laughs> but uh. We we got these things in Canada called electric lights. We just had a switch in there. <laughs> well, got, I thought, I thought you guys had them too. I don't know. Yeah, we have them. I mean, but I mean, the main thing, like I said, is just to be able to maintain that free hand or keeping both hands on the weapon for a more effective uh, grip on it. But that'd be my take. Nathan, did you catch uh, what we were talking about, brother? Uh, home defense. We're talking about uh, weapon-mounted lights or, uh, you know, lights for home defense. Do you prefer it on the gun or in your hand? I typically uh, have it uh, hooked onto the gun so I can't forget it. Ah. Fair enough. Okay. Right on. Um, yeah, I have... Uh, I'm kind of mixed on that. I, I do have... My shotgun has a, has a light on it. My AR has a light on it. Um, uh, but I don't know. Primarily, uh, I probably have it in the hand because I got a flashlight. Um, sits right next to my bed, so I'd probably grab that. And um, Jaeger just did a pretty cool video on uh, uh, light you've, manipulation. You've invoked the name of Jaeger now. You've ruined the topic. Uh, I mean, it's it's actually pretty good. I mean, I know some people have mixed feelings. We we'll have about to him. start like what's that principle where eventually someone will mention Nazis if you talk about any topic. We're we'll gonna start a similar principle with you. Goodwin's <laughs> law. Yeah, well, the, it was cool because I never some of the stuff he uh, he uh, demonstrated I never really thought of with light manipulation. So uh, give y'all check it out. It's pretty pretty neat little uh, little video to show you how to how to use light to your favor. Um, you know, and it gets away from that whole cliche of people saying that they're going to shoot. You know, if you have a, a light on your weapon, people are going to shoot at the light and in turn hit you. Uh, Here's a little secret for you. There's a cliche there because it's not just a cliche. It's been proven throughout history as a bad battle tactic. So It's like there's a reason stereotypes exist usually. There's a reason why people <laughs> say they'll shoot your light because... Battle proven that if you have a light mount on your weapon, you're like more likely to get shot directly at. So. Well, if I'm in battle, that's a different story. Yeah, but. but when you go into a self-defense situation like a home invasion, you have to assume you're in battle because you do not know what you're up against. Have right, it's it's kind of a similar person. concept to flash hiders. Where do they come from? The necessity yeah. to hide that muzzle flash. Right. That's yep. you know, it's a similar line of thinking. 
when I love when people try to rewrite the book of history to try to, to I don't know, make a video or something. But that there's a reason why that that's a no no. All right. Well, there were the advantages of uh, smokeless powder was you couldn't tell where the guy was shooting from. Yeah. I don't um. I don't own. I have a really hot bright light, um, it's like a 175 lumen, something like that. A handheld flashlight. I don't have any lights on my guns. I'm not against them. I think they're very cool. Um, and my opinion, I think the purpose one of the service when he has really bright lumen, high lumen um, lights, so you can blind somebody with them. If I mean not leading them into it, but once you kind of identify somebody's there and you you pop that sucker on, you know, it's it does somewhat blind people, and that does give you an opportunity, you know. Uh, within seconds, you know, milliseconds or seconds to. I want to take you know. a second and interrupt here, and I want to say to everybody, Bulldog is in the chat. For those of you that haven't oh. seen Bulldog in a while. Cool man, welcome Bulldog. Uh, cool. But uh, but going, you know, following up on that, basically, uh, uh, I, I think having a uh, gun on light's cool, definitely a resource. But if let's say the gun does, if the light does fail, uh, you should also know how to train. I need a police technique where you cross your arms. Um, then have the flashlight in the other hand as you're shooting. You're doing a one-handed. That's a good fallback on technique. I think you know a technique to fall back on. And yeah, that's where I'm at on it. Cool. Uh, me personally, I uh, I don't rely on a light on e in my hand or on the gun because I haven't trained enough with either one to kind of say that that's the way I go because I just. Uh, I think it's something that I could fumble with, and in in a time like that when I need it, I I'd, I'd rather just use my eyesight. Typically, um, in a home defense situation, there's enough light where I can see, and I'm very familiar with you know the way things are laid out. You know, typically I, I can see fine at night, and I'm not afraid of muzzle flash. So that's my stance. Go ahead, G Webs. Definitely both. You got to have a light on your gun, and it's a good idea to have one in your pocket or available for all the advantages people said. And you just turn them off, and you get rid of all the disadvantages everybody said. Yeah, pretty much what Gweb said. I always carry a um, one of those little tiny Magnite uh, solitaires, the AAA ones, and uh, it's got the LED, and they're really bright. And I carry those on me every day. It's by my bed every night, and so. Um, I don't have any gun, any uh, lights on any of my guns, but I guess there's no real big disadvantage to having one on there because you can, you know, use it at your discre discretion whenever you find it's apt to the situation. Reagan. Oh. Um. Pay attention, dipshit. So, <laughs> something in the internal for you, Yankee. Sure. Um, I just carry a flashlight with me on the pocket, and then I, there's a flashlight bolted to the AR for, so I don't really prefer it either way or the other. What the, f I got a side question, where the hell is that cowbell noise coming from? It's Eric. No, but like, I, what, is, is there like is a, a cowbell? It sounds like those little do -do -do I don't know <laughs> what it is, he always cowbell. claims he has no clue what those it is, jack in the box present. Yeah, there must be something wrong with this mic. I might have to buy it. You know what? Mic it, it, it could be um, reverb. If you're in like a little cubby, it's probably reverb off of the walls that you're not hearing, but it's picking it up on your mic. Eric, are you in a cowbell? <laughs> no. He's, he's chatting from within a cowbell. <laughs> it's like the old party lines back in the day. He shares the internet with the other people in the area, so yeah. somebody's just listening. I want more cowbell. <laughs> he's got I mean, a fever. Like I guess it's me now. I am a, I'm a firm believer. I kind of agree with G Webs. If you have both, you've got the best of both, and you can eliminate the worst of both. But if you're only going to have one, I always say it should be in your hand uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, one, you don't want that time proven thing of, hey, look, there's a target right there. And plus, lights don't always alert a, a bad guy to where you absolutely are. They also, a lot of times, alert bad guys to where you're coming from before you even come around a corner. So they can be prepared for you before you're even in the same room with them if you're carrying lights. So I just like a light in my hand that I can click on if I absolutely oh. have to, which is one of the reasons why I don't ever let my house get dark. Darkness is a bad guy's friend. It always yep. is. Don't ever let yeah. bad guys have darkness if you can help it. Uh, it, it it's, the reason I like the light in my hand for another reason is, uh, and Steve M. said it perfectly in the chat, and it's something I was waiting to get to for my turns, screwed it up for me. 
But if your weapon is on, if your only light you have is on your weapon and you're using that as a light, well, then you're pointing your weapon at things now that you don't want to destroy. And that's one of the big yeah, no-nos. Point. Don't point your weapon at something you don't want to destroy. If I've got my gun here, my light here, I can pan my light around and see everything in front of me. You know, side to side and not have to point my gun at everything that I'm looking at. You know, That's so. a good point. But that, that's the reason why, too, I like not, not to jump anybody's turn, but that's why I like the detachable one so I can pull yeah, it off. It's not going to be anything we solve here tonight, I don't think, but it's just nope. different ideas for people. Yeah. I mean, I have a flashlight next to the bed, I'm, but my house, again, like Yankees, is never dark because, you know, you got LED lights are dirt cheap and they don't cost you anything really in power. So, you know, why not have a few low, you know, low, low light in, in the hallways and, you know, doesn't cost you nothing. No, nope, I have emergency lighting installed in my house, actually. If someone was ever to cut the power to my house... I have little lights installed in the hallway upstairs and the hallway downstairs that light up and will keep my house lit. Yeah, that's a power. good idea. Yeah. And it only cost me, like, the units themselves were like $65 a piece for the units, and then I paid 100 bucks a piece to have them installed by an electrician friend. So <clears throat> they run right off of, he just ran a wire down to the outlet that's below them, and if they ever lose power, the battery in them kicks on and lights up your house. No, that's what I was just about to ask. So they're, they're battery backup. They're not running on a generator or anything? No, they run to the power source, and the power source keeps the internal battery constantly charged. And then if they ever lose uh, power, the battery, the little switch switches to the battery, and they light up. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Well, you can buy them, too, that you can just plug into your outlet, too, and if your outlet loses power, boom. Yeah, they come on, and they give you enough light yeah. that you're not going to trip over yeah, shit. Yeah, we've got some of those nightlight type deals yeah. that are that way, but, you know, nothing substantial, but just, you know, just some... Well, they have some that aren't night lights or emergency lights. You plug, They're usually like little round lights. You plug them in, they're like lay, what, lay lighting. You plug them in, and if you'll notice, they'll never come on, but if you pull them out of the outlet, they come on. They're set to come on when they lose power, so you plug them back. Yeah, uh, you get some really nice ones. Uh, they're like 400 lumen or some shit. They're yeah. crazy. Costco yeah, has them for like $30. You get like six of them to stick throughout your house. Yeah, yeah we yeah. just... We got a couple of those. What happens if you get like in a clap on war with the robber and you have all the clap everything hood those <laughs> and you're like, hey, every time you off. fire twice the lights go on and off. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most hilarious robbery ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like an SNL skit. Well, I can't tell your smoke detector is gonna go off from experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, my smoke detectors go off for no damn reason sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> I, dude, that is the most terrifying thing. Yeah. They we went everything. on vacation. I actually get a call. I am in Ketchikan, Alaska, and I get a phone call from our neighbor. Your fire alarm's going off. And it was because our house had gotten really cold, and it was warm inside and cold in the attic, and that set the fi fire alarms off for some reason. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> the temperature differential? Hello? <laughs> I said, what is it, the temperature differential between... Yeah, it was the difference, the that's what the fire, fire department declared, told me, there was difference between the super cold air up top and the warmer air below, somehow set the, he says it does it sometimes, so, I'm like, okay, but that's real fun to be getting phone calls while you're hundreds and hundreds of miles away saying your house is burning down or whatever. Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> yeah. And that's then you gotta, gotta, ask, then you gotta wonder... Yeah, why is your neighbor phoning you and not the fire department? Well, they were already there. She was just oh. calling to let me know. She had a key. Oh. She let them in. They were going to break the window. But, oh, well. So it was yeah. not fun. And then they charged me $180. What? Really? For a call? Yep, for come answering a fire alarm that was a false alarm. So. Uh, oh, so your fire alarm's wired in? So that yeah. it actually goes right Oh, yeah, the, my fire alarm so, calls yeah. the local fire department when it goes off. So. Wow, that's crazy. I had yeah. my one I got one of those uh, little fire pits in the backyard, you know, little, like, I don't know what they're made of, but, you know, a little circle fire pit. And uh, I wanted to burn evidence a bunch or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So I was burning a bunch of paper one day, just old bills and credit card statements, shit I wanted to get rid of. And, um, Anyway, it's got a lid on it, so I'd, I'd set the fire and, and thought it all went out, and I put the lid on and went to work, and the neighbor called me and said that there was smoke coming out of my backyard, and it looked like it was coming out of the house, so she called the fire department. So the fire department had to come and jump over my wood fence 
get to the backyard and they realize it's just that fire pit smoldering and smoking. And uh, they didn't charge me a thing. They were like, no, nah, it's cool. They, you know. People like you are the reason Smokey the Bear cries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Indians, the Indian. Okay, well, I guess that exhausts our uh, topics for this evening. If, and I'm going to let it, uh, anyone on the actual video chat here, if you have a topic you'd like to discuss, we'll go ahead and do that first, and then we'll move on to some of the questions asked by people in the actual uh, text chat. Are you gonna Are you gonna go to the Desardi topic? So, yeah, eventually. I am gonna answer one of these questions here first. Though my favorite pudding is tapioca. <laughs> Way to go, like a tapioca kind of guy. Like, uh, Butterscotch. Like, yeah, like chocolate. Banana, uh, chocolate. Banana and chocolate mixed. Yeah, chocolate. yeah I, like the, I like the swirls, like vanilla chocolate. Yeah, I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm that one. Vanilla chocolate swirl. I'm a butterscotch guy. I was wondering what's up with the pudding talk. This this guy has been hammering the pudding questions in the chat. I, was... I like pudding. Who does it? I like Bill Cosby likes it. Yeah. Those are pudding <laughs> pops. I don't like pudding pops. Uh, those things were lost on me. I tried one of those once. I was like, this is gross. I just had pops. Bad. Bad. It's been for, like shit twenty years. I had one of those. How did you mention it? Do they even still make those anymore? I don't even know if they still make them. No, it turned out they were carcinogenic, probably. Probably. Oh, yeah. and, they were, and they were gross. So. What did All I right. miss? <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard something about people getting cancer from eating something, so... Uh, putting pops. Putting pops. Putting pops, yeah. yeah. All right, well, since no one has a topic in here, we're going to go ahead and go to this topic that sin abscess. Synapsis asked, uh, what do we feel about the Sardi losing his carry permit because of his YouTube videos? And it's a, that's a pretty uh, uh, touchy topic here, but let's just remember we're all talking about a fellow gun owner, as crazy as fucking batshit as he might be. Uh, so let's keep it respectful as we can and just talk about our actual thoughts on the actual what happened and what we know about it. If you don't know anything about it, feel free to say, hey, I don't really know anything about it. Well, Are did we, we going in any order or anything? No, it was just an open chat here. All right. Yeah. Well, did we prove that it was that it was actually because of his videos and not because of his mental That's status? Crazy, yeah. But, yeah, because well, he's. Sorry to cut you off. I actually did watch some of his videos on him uh, explaining why. Uh, the main reason he said it was given was because he went to a doctor's appointment, and the doctor had asked him some questions about. He said he had had some chest pain or. So uh, that, that, that's, that's old. That's the old shit. This is this that's is old. He's, oh, okay, that okay. was all mostly bullshit. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that was the original one, but the new one now is because of some things that were done in the video. Where he was not. He was already supposed to not. Um, he was already supposed to have had his his permit taken away or something like that. Well, he wasn't supposed to be in possession of firearms, but he was right. in possession of firearms on his video. And he pretty no, much those were said, fuck him or whatever. Yeah, but, right. I mean, <laughs> and, and I do believe, now, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe in one of his videos he made the statement that he hadn't been paying his taxes and that if any of the tax people came to collect, to try to steal his land and his family's land, he would shoot the processors if they came. Oh, for Christ's so, sake. Uh, see, now, now, I would say, say that, but yeah, I, I could probably... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if he had said some, something like that in a video, then yeah, I guess you could say he lost his guns because of his YouTube video. But it happened to, it happened to Jaeger for, for a brief little while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but I mean, Jaeger said he was going to shoot people. Yeah. Well, and then. Uh, yeah, but let's face it. On no, one, no one thinks Jaeger is going to shoot an innocent person. I mean, we yeah, just know no, that was no, just no. a hyper hyperbole. But uh, with the Sardi, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, say he poisoned some of his preps, you know. Yeah, so, and, and, yeah I'm still shocked it. that people watch yeah. his videos. In a lot of, well, he's lost stuff since in the last several months because he went to the. I don't know how he gained any in the first place. He's a total yeah. nut job. I don't think he really <laughs> went there initially. He was he wasn't going there like being, I guess, telling people how crazy he really fucking was. Or I only watched yeah. his videos after all this shit happened. I never. I came across one of his videos and I was like, whoa! I I, I remember coming in the chats and I asked you guys about him. And you guys were like, oh, don't even eat. You're like, don't go to him, don't sub to him, don't watch his shit. It's well, I, never, I would never say that. What I would say about the Sardi is I enjoyed having the Sardi in our chats. I enjoyed having the Sardi be part of our community. I thought he was a very different person. He was very interesting. He was fun to talk to. 
Uh, and I wish he could still be a part of our chats. I wish he would still be a part of our chats and our community. Uh, I, he chose a road to go down that alienated a lot of people, and the reasons he chose that road are his own, and I hope he's fine with them. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, if he ever chose to not have those beliefs or chose not to make them put them in everybody's face, I would welcome him back any day. But there is some thing to be said about you are responsible for the things you say and do. And if you say and do a lot of crazy shit, then you can't be too upset when people start saying you're crazy. <laughs> Just well, it's, like, it's like Desardi is on his most recent video talking about his permits. He's on the comment section telling other people that the reason that Yank that Jaeger got his carry permit back is because he made a pro-gay marriage video and he says that all these anti-Christ, pro-homosexual people are why my permit got taken away and that's why Jaeger got his back and he's commenting saying crazy stuff like that. Huh? Oops. If we're associating him losing his permit with that video he made with the tax stuff, um, what exactly is the justification for getting his permit revoked? Like obviously threatening government agents isn't great and all, but is that grounds for removal? Tennessee, from what Hell I understand, yeah. they had yeah. a provision. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> it's a crime. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Threatening Tra- well, Tennessee... to shoot people is a crime, so... <laughs> right. Well, it's not just the criminal part. Tennessee has a specific provision in their concealed carry law that says that the state police can revoke your permit if they feel that you are a threat to law enforcement or the community or something okay. like that. They can do that Very at will sad. and make you have to prove to get it back. So, And that's what happened to Jaeger, and that's what's happening to... Uh, Desardi is the state police suspended his permit pending review. Here's another. Here's just another rule of thumb. If you ever think you might be in a situation where you might have to shoot someone, don't talk about how you're going to shoot someone, <laughs> because that's just the worst thing you can do. That then makes it premeditated. Yeah. Or crazy. Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's no shortage of crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if I make a video where I say I'm going to defend myself if I'm attacked versus <laughs> if somebody comes to serve a processing warrant on me, I'm going to shoot them, Did there's a huge difference else? in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I don't know yeah. what happened. Yeah. I didn't boot you. So that's fine. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was just random. It, it like signed me out of Google for a second. Oh, I've had that happen too where I get signed out of Google. Yeah, yeah I've had to sign back in and it was like, but I never signed out. Right. I don't know. Whatever. Google probably has this role. So no, what, whatever it said, I did not out. kick you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Someone the other day sent me a thing. Said, it said you kicked me out and blocked me. I'm like, I didn't kick you out or block you. No, no. All like, it said was... Uh, I was like, and you're sending me PM, so I obviously didn't block you. It just, like, <laughs> it dropped the chat all of a sudden and then went to, like, the Google sign-in. So I signed back in, and then it said the chat was full, so I didn't know... I don't know what the hell was going on. Chat's not full either. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So. All right, I got a topic if we're done with that. Sure. Um, went to the gun show. I saw a today in Texas and saw a Desert Eagle 357 for 890 bucks, 800. A little under 900, if you will. Uh, okay. We'll finish. Okay. No, it was a. It was a. Was that uh, it? That was on Parker. Parker, <laughs> no, Parker, 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 finish. You know, what do you guys think? Is that a is that a good deal? No, I've seen no, the least like expensive of them. No, that's yeah. the least no. expensive of them. Well, it's here, here's the thing too. It's also it's on a Desert Eagle, so that's not a deal, no matter how much they sell it. <laughs> yeah. um, Eight hundred would be a deal for like the titanium gold fifty AE. That's about what they go for. I don't know the three fifty sevens. Do you know which generation it was? No, nah, I didn't really. I just saw it, and then I was like, "Yeah, I'd, I'd love to get that." Moved on, but I didn't. Yeah, the, didn't. there's there's about there's the Mark One, the Mark Seven, and the current Mark Nineteen. But the Mark Nineteen has even gone through some transformations. Like now, Magnum Research sells it with a Picatinny rail as opposed mm-hmm. to a dovetail mount on top of the barrel. So you've mm-hmm. got a bunch of different iterations of the same kind of gun. So it's hard yeah. to say without knowing exactly what it was, whether or not that was a solid deal. If it was an older Israeli gun. Is it worth that money? Uh, in my opinion, yes. But uh, I also don't. I think that gun in a three fifty seven is kind of weird. You can, yeah. but you can change them out, right? You can do uh, multiple barrels. Yeah. The the problem is with the three fifty seven, you have to within swap. the generation. Okay. Yeah, it, that's correct. Um, three fifty seven, you have to swap the bolt 
the barrel and the magazine as opposed to just the uh, barrel and the magazine with the 44 and 50. Okay. So it's an additional step to, to swapping everything, and the bolt is not a... It's not difficult by any means, but it's not fun because there's a, l a bunch of little parts. Gotcha. Is it easy? I'll go it's further to say that you could sure. you could say that it's worth it if it like you said if it was older or whatever, but you're not really looking for an old classic one that you don't want to shoot anyway, right? All my guns you're are just, shooters. That's what I'm saying. So I would yeah. say that I wouldn't feel bad at all if I was you that you missed on that one. If it would have been like five hundred dollars, then oh, yeah, I'd be saying it, yeah. like go buy it. But mm -hmm. for eight hundred, that's like barely what it might be worth. So you definitely didn't miss something that you should be worried about. Cool. We're cool. talking about Desert Eagle here. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, yeah. I saw one at the gun show. I, I've seen them before, but I, they're usually well over 1100 going into the 50 AEs and the 44s. This one was right under nine. So I was, you know, thought about it, but then again, like I said, yeah. the 357 is a good bit less desirable. That's why it doesn't bring the same kind of money. Sure. I don't see much of a use from other than just for coolness factor. Because I mean, if you really want a 357 or 44, they're a revolver. I got. I have one, but uh. Uh, I've heard people talk about 357 automatics or semi-autos and the other ones, the Kunin, and people say... The Kunin is you know, amazing. Yeah. Now, if it's oh, really? automag, that would be cool. Uh, Kunin, <laughs> Kunin, novelty, unwieldy piece of junk. Any revolver cartridge in a semi-auto handgun is a novelty in itself. Right. I mean, let's be fair about it. It's a novelty, but that doesn't mean it's not fun as hell to shoot. I'll be right back. Do you have a Desert Eagle Chaos? Yeah. I'll be right back. My son's I, back. I, huh? All right. We'll see you in a, in a minute there. Just well, keep I like that one. It looks really yourself. cool. It's just um, it's a $1,400 pistol, I think. That's what they average. Uh, no, depends, that's for it, the, it on the it, that's for better finishes and the better calibers. Like you said, you got to change the bolt face and stuff, so not that many people get 357 unless they don't like the recoil, and then what? that's well, like buying the Hummer. about the Kunin, the Kunin, the Kunin whips with the V6. Sorry. Okay. With the Kunin, oh, yeah. you can swap um, the recoil spring and shoot 38 specials out of it, which is kind of cool if you're looking yeah. to save money. But um, I don't. My stance on that kind of the Kunin specifically is don't buy that gun unless you want to shoot 357s out of it. Because stop being a bitch. That's my stance. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to shoot one just to see how it feels compared to the 357s. I shot uh, a baby desert. Eagle. <laughs> I never. I used to own a baby desert eagle nine mil. Cool. I didn't like that. So the magazine kept dropping out after like three or four rounds. That's I ended awful. up getting rid of it. Yeah. It was, it was like every time I shot it, I think the grip was just too small in it or something for me. I don't. Know. Or the placement of the magazine release. Just might not have been uh, the right gun for you. Right. The revolver no, um, ammo out of the semi-autos, is that because of the uh, the rim or the length of the cartridge? or? Uh, typically it's a rimmed cartridge. Okay. Um, like you'll see 357s, um, like uh, the Automag is an older one, the Kunin is a current one even though they made an older version of the Kunin, uh, the Desert Eagle is very common for that, and uh, you'll also see guns like the LAR Grizzly, which is a, a gun that not a lot of people know about but is effing cool. Um, the LAR Grizzly shoots, uh, I think it's like four, 44 Win Mag, no. Um, 45 Win Mag, that's what it is, and then you'll also see it in 50 AE and some other cartridges as well. Uh, but typically, the, the rim gives that away. When you think about how they're made, too, and like, just because they look like brass on the outside, the insides of bullets are all drastically different, so when you get something that's made for an automatic that's made to cycle in action, it's going to be more substantial, it's going to build pressure, it's going to use that pressure to cycle the action. Where on a revolver, these guns, these bullets, some of these bullets were literally made before pistols are even in existence. So they are made out of thinner brass. Their walls, you know, they expand differently because they had a rod literally pushing them out of the chamber. They didn't care at all about expansion. So when you've got a semi-auto trying to pull that out and cycle an action, cycle the next one up, it's sometimes difficult to make all that happen okay. physically. I, I yep. did get my hands on a SOCOM, HK SOCOM 45. You have to have some big ass hands, man, so to to handle that gun. It's this, a big old grip on that gun. Is that the Mark 23? You mean? Yeah, the Mark 23 still come. Oh yeah. It's big old. That's what the ladies told me too. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> so that's what the ladies told me. Oh okay. <laughs> 
I heard. At least, a, I heard at least he hopes those were ladies. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's like she did have big hands. <laughs> and are, are women apple. supposed to have Adam apple? Adam yeah, apples? and Vegas women have Adam apples, right? <laughs> <laughs> Something in the water. Yeah, same me same. No big deal. <laughs> she beat me in our wrestling. Uh, 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 just, I, I just want to weigh in real quick. Um, as as somebody that owns a gun like the Desert Eagle, I I think that most people get off on the but wrong. But you actually owned a Desert Eagle. Huh? What? But you owned a Desert Eagle. Oh yeah, I do. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I thought you said you owned a gun like the Desert Eagle. Well, we we were talking about other guns like the Kunin 357 and the Automag and oh, okay. the LA or Grizzly. So. Um, I think that a lot of people get off on the wrong foot about those guns because they expect them to be kind of quote-unquote go-to-war guns. Um, generally, while some of them are reliable and do function well, like my 50 AE runs really, really well 99% of the time, but it does jam up every once in a while if I don't do my part. And, you know, with that in mind, I think as long as you consider the fact that you shouldn't be pulling that out in a defensive situation, then you'll be good because that's at least that's my stance. Is they are novelties. As long as you accept that, it's going to be a great time with you and that gun. Yeah, some I'm guns pretty are, sure Commando is real desert eagles in the desert. So I don't think a desert. I read that on the internet. In the I read it on the internet. That's they were made over there for their special <laughs> ops guys. <laughs> <laughs> can't argue. They can't put it on the internet if it isn't true. That's, that's right. They carry him in a dual shoulder rig. <laughs> the dual sh Somebody yeah. just sent Instead me a link for your chat. Double Someone sent you what? Somebody, somebody said that they wanted a link for the chat, but they asked me for it. Who is it? I, Who, I don't. Right somebody I've the, never heard of. So right over here in the private chat, it is. Now. Can't look into it. Yeah, there you go. Never heard of that person. I think that might have been the same person I looked at a little bit ago that has zero sub, zero activity, and their account was just created like an hour ago. Oh, Bulldog yeah. made it in. Yeah, you Bulldog. Did, you dog. just now noticing Bulldog's in here? I've been doing laundry off. off Wait a minute, Stone Guy's in this chat? Stone Guy was over Stone Guy was off in the corner doing bong hits. Yes, I'm here, Stone Guy. <laughs> By the way, Stone Guy, check your PNs. I'm right trying on. to get you through the chats, but. Well, how you been, brother? Good. Actually, yeah, quite you have good. To type I'll in all caps for Stone Guy to be able to read it. Oh yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that. I'll, I'll explain why I've been gone in a, a later time. But right on. Oh, good. Glad you're alive. Yes, I'm very much alive. Just very busy. Nothing personal against Scott Kane, but because of some things that have happened in some recent chats, we have to be a little more careful about who we let in. And with zero subs and a brand new account. It, I think that's only fair. You and I had a conversation about this the other day. I think it's fair that, you know, in these chats we get guys that are, you know, active in the community. Yeah. You know, I don't think that's asking too much to bring the more active members out and have them discuss things rather than guys that don't uh, don't make videos or don't participate in any way. That's lame. The guys, the people that are out there watching, generally just, want just to see. Just watching and commenting on watch. videos. Right. This is enough for me, but uh, you know, just like I say, right now because some things that have happened in other chats, I just can't be letting just anybody in. Fair enough. Anybody else got any topics, man? We're we're running dry here. Everybody's just sitting there like we're everybody's falling asleep. What the hell? Uh, I, got a I, actually, I got a question okay. I can ask people. Yeah. Okay. All right. There we go. That's all we needed. Go for it. Oh, my kid's back. Uh, wow, wow. <laughs> He's supposed to be at his grandparents till Monday, but they brought him home early. i got to start writing into a no early return clause into the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got homesick. Oh, oh, I'm busy. He just missed his dad. With all this technology, couldn't they just have Skyped you? Yeah. Just they, only live the like, they only live like 15 minutes from here. So. Uh, you just let him join the chat, Yankee. Here's my question. I don't know anything about ARs, and I don't remember what I paid for this damn thing. <laughs> so I'm selling this. 
what would, what should I ask for this thing? Is that, uh, is that the AR-10? It's an AR-10. It's got a Troy front end, a stainless linear arms barrel. Uh, it's got a DPMS upper and lower. It's got a, how do you pronounce this, V-L-T-O-R. Voltor. Mm. Uh, 1500. Yankee Hill flash hider. Yeah. It's got the removable carry handle top. The only thing it's missing from being a complete build is it doesn't have the post sight on the front yet because I never could. What kind of barrel was it? It's a, a 16 or 16 inch uh, uh, Rainier arm stainless barrel. Are you trying to move it quickly or you want to get decent money for oh, it? I'm not in a hurry to move it. I'm just glad it's sat in my safe since the day it was built. It was built by Kurt's custom shop over here. They're custom in our place. And uh, is it a standard trigger in there? Yeah, and uh, uh, never even shot it. Never even put a bullet in the magazine yet. So. Sure, they didn't put in some fancy trigger and all that. You could probably get fifteen hundred for it, but I'll give you a thousand. Like, well, I would never assume that he did because I don't know. So I'm not okay. Sure. Well, just it sounds like you put a lot of stuff on there. They might put a fancier trigger in than the stock. Well, I bought all the stuff, and he just kind of helped me assemble it. So I thought I, I think maybe like thirteen, fourteen hundred, something like that. And that's probably what I'll put on it. I I'll give no you idea. A th- I'll give you a thousand, Yankee. No, thank you. Okay, I have but no idea. Not an AR guy. It's I'd look real, but I'm charging you five fifty for shipping. Really? Wait till <laughs> more than that around here. The problem is it's a it's a like a build, so they're harder to sell generally. Yeah, but he's he's got harder to sell when there's stuff high on the wall. stuff on it. Yeah, it's a decent build that's never been shot, and there's not stuff on the wall for him to compare it with right now. Uh, oh, I'm just, uh, over in my area. There's tons of stuff. Oh, okay. He, he Are you put it online? Should have sold it two months ago. Yeah, I'm gonna put it online. Just list it locally. I think it's all right. Online, you not should just nationally online. Cause I don't like the shit. Oh. Yeah. Should, I like my you three wait till the next scare, then price couch. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Somebody said twenty four hundred dollars for an AR ten with those goodies. Are you drunk? Yeah, no way. way. No way. Yeah. Well, it might be Canadian in Canada. You probably have to pay that much for it. Yeah, but don't you guys use pesos up there? No. <laughs> our, our dollars are just more colorful than yours. Well, actually, our dollars are coins, so. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, they're worth ninety-seven and ninety-eight cents of your money. So uh, I've been to Vancouver. I've thing. been to the west coast of Canada. I'm pretty sure you all are on the yen. <laughs> that's just the west coast out here in, in the yeah in in the. Uh, well, that's that's Mulety that's Western right. Canada. We're kind of yeah. He does live in Illinois, so yeah. Well, there you go. Hey, biker Bob, have they gotten around to changing? My is one less sig I own, so I got to get rid of it and just see. <laughs> hey, Biker Bob, have they gotten around? A dozen. Speak one more time, Nathan, so I can cut you off again. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. I was just. <sighs> Ready to go. No, not going to do it. <laughs> Anybody got anything to say? Topic? Should we end the chat? Uh, somebody was talking about uh, that guy, Mark Kessler. I don't know much about him. Um, he was has been suspended without pay for a certain period of time because he made some videos that were like, uh, you know, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you know, he's a police chief uh, calling people libtards. No, 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 no. Like, not you specifically, but uh, I guess... I don't know. I, I don't know much about the guy all, other than the fact that he's in Pennsylvania. I think he should be fired. The union should not protect him, and he should be gone. Because when you uh, sign contracts to be a police officer, you state you will not do things like YouTube videos and stuff like that. So mm. he violated the, the conditions of his contract. As far as I'm concerned, he should be gone. Whether he called people libtards or uh, whether he called them, you know, uh, neocon bastards or whatever you want to call people, he violated the contacts of conduct for being a law enforcement officer. He should be gone. Do those uh, do those do. rules of conduct uh, expand into your personal life? Yes, they do. Yes, okay. definitely. That's something Very I was much so. On. Okay. Yep. That's one of the reasons I am not working right now because the first thing I was told during the interview by the captain over here in Vancouver was you would have to cancel your YouTube channel. You cannot have that. That'd be a lot. It's very sweet that we're that important to you, <laughs> or we're even that, that self-important. No, I just didn't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> he was just looking for any excuse to sit down and make YouTube yeah. videos. 
He just had I to do that interview. To, I was just hoping to get on long enough to fall down and get on disability anyway. So. <laughs> that was just one of his mandatory videos to keep getting the government dime, I think. Does YouTube yeah. offer disability if I fall down making a YouTube video? <laughs> like, <laughs> Only if it goes viral. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ask uh, Tex Gribner if they offer disability. Someone saying he said that liberals take it in the ass or something. I don't know. I, I find that um, pretty lame of him as a police chief or whatever he was. That that's my understanding. He was a chief of police in in some area. Actually, just you know, probably an hour or two north of me. I mean, come on, dude. You're a you're a chief of police. Don't act like that. You know, like if you're gonna make comments like that, don't be such a dipshit about it. I right. think positions are actually kind of screwed up too. Think my chief of police is more mature than that. I would think you're not qualified for the job just for your maturity level alone. I wouldn't want you having a gun and a badge. Right. Are chiefs yeah. elected usually or appointed or? What? They're appointed by the city council or city management. Yeah, they sheriffs are elected. sheriffs are elected. Yeah. I think there was something I, I read something that said there was twenty thousand signatures that said they wanted him fired, and all they did was suspend him temporarily. So <laughs> I, I mean, people are pissed about it. The people that yeah. live where he's from that's are pissed. He's, that's because he's got so much dirt on the mayor, probably that. <laughs> hey, that yeah, could be. Possible. Yeah. Well, I'll fire the mayor too. If that's the case. I'm so used to way back in the old days, the police chief, when the judge or someone would get caught DUI on the highway, they'd shut it all down. And, you know, and there's a little blackmail against blackmail. We used to run favors for each other. It's not that way anymore as much. But Did he just say he likes videos with black males against black males? I don't know. I, I didn't yes, quite I did. get that either. That's what I, I heard. I heard something about the uh, U-Corn. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, I did. I'm blackmail on blackmail action. Um, I, I went there. I'm sorry. I apologize. Next, we'll be talking about unicorns and fairies. It's my business. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. I'm gonna head out. Thanks for the invite. You're welcome. All right, have a good one. See, see you later, Birdman. Yeah, yeah, somebody, somebody else in the chat was saying he got fired for department equipment, for using department equipment, and not for the content. So, I, I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, but that's what. You don't make them from work. Yeah, I'm about I'm to say, sure was he making got YouTube fired. video in his office? Yeah, I, I have no clue. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. I guess this guy named Mark Kessler, he was a, a police chief, uh, I believe, Lord. in Pennsylvania, and he made some over the top comments, we'll call them, okay. on YouTube, and they kind of went a little bit viral, and, you know, he got called on it. Yeah, some, uh, some police departments, I don't understand, do have. Uh policies about uh, social media and all that stuff that you cannot participate in. Yeah, well, that contract you sign when you go, when you enlist, when you enroll, or well, not enroll, but take the job, it covers all that bullshit. Even before social media, it covered making interviews on television, interviews to newspapers, blah, 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 all that shit. So, right, and they've just expanded it to encompass social media. Yeah, so I mean, really, you broke your contract here. A lot of them go as far as to say you are to behave as a gentleman and scholar at all times. Yeah. <laughs> I think of scholars when I think of cops. Yeah. Yeah. I remember they actually, there were some departments would give you an IQ test, and if you scored too high, they wouldn't hire you because it meant you would leave the job after so many years. All of them. If you score too high on certain parts of the test, they don't want to hire you because they know you'll leave too soon. <laughs> There's a question for the chaos in the chat. Uh, AK-47. Tactical or traditional? Can I have both? No. <laughs> um, if I gotta pick one, uh, I'll go traditional. I, I'm a big fan of um, guns with wooden furniture on them, and uh, you yeah, know, I like enjoy. a, a class. Yeah, I love the wood. Uh, a classic, like really well kept uh, AK. Maybe that like reddish color. Yeah, that's what I dig. Are you, are you buddy yeah. Matt? <laughs> if, if, if I was going to go with an AK, I would go with the classic wood furniture, but that's because I own a conical hat and black pajamas to go with it. <laughs> there you go. You should have an SKS then, because they were far more prevalent. I like um, I like the tactical stuff, but uh, you know, it's I prefer the more traditional look. I mean, like 
Um, my buddies at Krebs Customs do some badass tactical style guns, but you know, I if I had a choice between one of their guns with the wood or one of their guns with the plastic, I'm going with the one with the wood. I think it oh. looks nicer and it's still functional. You know, it's like functional wood. Yeah, functional wood. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. I don't know. I like the. I, I, I like you the don't want to get the dysfunctional yeah. wood. My, but my AKs do don't need those little blue pills. There's pills for that. Just ask Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Compliment you. Hey, making I'm a your wood bed man. Too. I'm telling you, man. I like wood too. Yeah. You can put your bed in, in, as a backdrop. You gotta have it made. <laughs> Are you putting blue glazers in that? No, it's Viagra. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Because it makes my shots go harder. How you doing, Bulldog? Hello. Cool, man. All right, we got that out of the way. Yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, I got a topic for you guys. I was reading an article about uh, this guy's wife was looking up backpacks for the kids, and then, he, uh, or no, he was looking up backpacks, and then she looked up pressure uh, cookers. And the next thing they know, a week later, they got the uh, feds and SWAT gear showing up to their house for Googling <laughs> pressure cookers and backpacks. Is that a That's true story? That. Yes. That's a true yeah. story. Yep. Yeah, I, I, wow. I actually read that somewhere in the newspaper. Like, real paper, not internet paper. <laughs> the real paper. Yeah. They use trees for it. Yep. <laughs> it was in print, so it had to be real. Well. It was this internet stuff. Yeah. Has a little bit more uh, of a reputation for being truthful. Just a little bit, but. <laughs> That's kind of far fetchy, though, for probable cause, don't you think? I mean. Well, the, they came and talked to him. They didn't kick the door in. Okay. They said there were three SUVs and six guys, and they were armed. In SWAT gear. Yeah, in SWAT gear. Six of them in SWAT gear came and knocked on the door. Because that's necessary to, to ask somebody questions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't How sound like asking there's... questions to me. How much is just their salary, and however much time it took them to get prepared, and then write the reports after? Right. Mm -hmm. I guess who pays I, well, for that? I, I almost wonder if there was more to that story that we're not being told. Uh, like, do you do you guys honestly think that these guys are out there, you know, just randomly knocking on people's doors with six armed men for stuff as small as YouTube or uh, Google searches and stuff like that? That's you guys likely. think that's honestly the case? It's not likely. There's usually always more to a story. Yeah. Yeah. It may be their last name sounded faintly Arabic. Uh, you know. The, Slightly. The one, they are totally profiled. Those people. Yeah. The the one thing that was mentioned in the story was her husband, through his work, did go to Asia at times. So he did. He was an international businessman. So in other words, it's someone who's going back and forth between America and countries we know we are at war with on a terrorist level, who is also searching for backpacks and pressure cookers online. That's a little more to the story than just a Google search. Yeah. He's probably on a watch list already because he goes back and forth, and probably the the dealings that he goes back and forth to Asia for are probably suspect, and that's why he's on a watch list already. Yeah, I'm putting yeah, a link to this in the chat yeah. that it was something similar to happen back in April. Some lady ordered one and had it shipped her husband's address, and then it had a Boston shipping label on it, and everybody freaked out. Well, when was that around the time of the bombing? Was that in February or, or early April? Yeah. Yeah, it was early. It was springtime, early springtime. Okay. Is Bulldog asleep? I haven't heard him. No, sleep. I'm here. Okay. I'll put a link in the chat. You can check it out. It's a quick article. How come you're not showing yourself anymore? Did you get uglier since we last saw you? Yes, that's exactly why I'm not showing myself. Because I've got so much uglier since the last time you guys saw me. He's gotten a little green, I think. Yeah. No, it's because I may be getting a new job here, and I'm not sure yet as to if I'm able to show my face on YouTube videos. So if I'm you're making be a more. Chief? No, I'm not going to be a police chief. <laughs> If I do, I might have to move the videos from my face. Really? So. I didn't know McDonald's was so picky about social media. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That brings, up, uh, that brings up an interesting topic we could talk about amongst these guys. Um, would you guys take down your videos for a potential employer? If, like, you know, if they offered you 
you know, dollars. Not that well. I mean, anybody could say that. Yes, I would do it for a million dollars a year or something like that. But I'm saying like a normal salary, normal job. And they said, you know what? We can't. We found out that you do this on the side. We can't have you doing that. Would you take down your videos? Nope. If it's if it's close mm -hmm. to six digits, I'm there. I'm, I would yeah, do it. I'm, 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 Considering the situation I'm in, yes, I need the job. Yeah, I got like there a you go. Dollar. Someone offered me a quarter million dollar a year job where I sat around all day and just watched porn and tested soda. I would, yeah, sure, I'd do it in a minute. <laughs> that probably not. <laughs> Anybody else? No, I, I wouldn't. I, just... I mean, if that was if it was a choice between my livelihood and YouTube, obviously I would pick my livelihood. But right, feeding the family is more important to me than making a video. Yeah, but if it's just a matter of, I mean. Yeah, you know, there's there's so many jobs out there. Principal, yeah. You know, you, you guys don't really might have need to create, might get to create another channel name and another. Uh, yeah, you know, there's that. Be very very covert with it, but you know. I just yeah. got a new channel where I wear dark glasses all the time, so everybody knows it's me. Yeah. Or just, or just wear glasses. That's all it takes. I'll just change my screen name to the Yankee Marshall question mark. That way, there's no. <laughs> <laughs> That's super effect. slick. Yeah. It's like when Biker Bob made. When Biker Bob made his spam account the other day, and he put not Biker Bob as his spam account name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone in the chat said, uh, can we explain why XDs cost more than Glocks? I think that's a really weird question, but um, I don't know. Somebody want to weigh in on that? Uh, because Glocks a fool are made by one so company. Far. Glocks are made by one company, and XDs are made by one company, and then there's the middleman, so there's got to be profit times two. Yeah. Actually, I think there's more than a middleman. I think there's a company that makes them, and then a uh, another company that barters them, and then an import company that brings them in and sells them. So you're paying multiple profit. Yeah. I think XD or Springfield's put a lot of money into uh, advertising and marketing their weapon as well, um, as we're where I think Glock doesn't have to as much because of all the advocates they already have for it. I might be out of line, but I'll speak for never enough ammo, and I'll say it's also quality on the XD side you're paying for. Yeah, because we all know he is a huge XD fan. I'm pretty sure he'd stand behind he me on that. Mm -hmm. I would have to agree that I shot an XDM last week, and uh, I loved it. XDM, four and a half. Yeah, it was a four uh, and a half. We were, we were joking. So, guy, why are we looking at your wall? Are you like jacking it or something? <laughs> no, nah, I'm over here getting all my shit. I'm right here. Hand check. I'm getting my shit ready for a match tomorrow. So I'm oh, okay. Scary when I can't see your hand. You're That's what he means for me. jacking it. <laughs> <laughs> That's code for tying up the women in the basement again. <laughs> oh, God. I told you. One of them got loose. I'm putting I've got a match tomorrow between two of the women in the basement and some jello and a pool. <laughs> hey, check this out. I, oh. oh, God, he's going to show us. I went up to the Glock factory. They gave me one of those. Y'all ever seen a Glock hat that color? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's the new logo. I'll take it. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Send me that. Did they give you that for free? Yeah. Wow, I wish they'd give me a free hat. Just drive up to Smyrna, Georgia. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know how many times you've been there, Stone Guy? Uh, twice. So the first time you went there, would you do it on your GPS, or did you go with somebody, or what? Uh, yeah, a friend of mine told me where it was. Um, did he give you good directions, or just give you that it's on that little cul-de-sac, or I guess that's a loop or whatever it's on. That yeah, horseshoe. Well, he yeah, he gave me general directions, and then I just put their actual physical address in my in my GPS. I did it on the GPS, and I drove up to that like building across the street that's unlabeled, and then me and Haas were like all gross and like looking in the windows of this building, like freaking them all out. So finally, somebody comes outside, and it's like, "What do you want?" I'm like, "Is this Glock?" No, big ass building across the street says Glock all over it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I have well, bad luck with GPS systems. There are several well, it sent us to a different building. That's why I was asking yeah. if maybe they hide that or something, or if they did that, or if just our GPS was cheap. Someone said no Marine tonight. I think he's with his family, and I think his wife keeps a close thing on him, so I think he's allowed to play tonight. <laughs> I 
uh, regarding the uh, XDs versus Glock thing, I I love my XD, but uh, something while I was out in Indiana happened, and it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I was doing some one-handed manipulations, and somehow I managed to rack the slide off of the gun. Now, what I think happened... (laughs) The hell? One-handed. One-handed I did this. I think what happened is, because of the position about here... Um, I think I caught the the takedown lever on my pants, and it's a flip up as opposed to a flip down. So I think what happened is I hooked it, flipped it up, and then somehow managed in the rack to, um, I guess, you know, get everything out of position, and it literally just, I racked it, and it kind of slid right off on the so ground. So you're saying you just rotate I, it. You don't have to press the, like, because I know on the bread you have to press the side of it and flip it down. You have to press the little button on the other side. Same thing can happen to a Nice. nice. Is that the 17R? Why is that red? Chaos. That's that training gun, right? It's that's a the reset. No. Oh, that's this is the uh, SART from it's next a, level. It's the upside down. It would be a red frame if it was the R, R model, and it would have a black slide. There you go. You can see it a little better. Ah, uh, okay, cool. But is that that's the one that's got the resetting trigger, right? No, that's an aftermarket third-party thing. Can you see that? That's just for training. There's the oh. red. There's the green. Oh, sweet. Yeah, this is now, it's a neat. I really like this thing. Does that have the little sensors that you shoot at? No, this does not come with that. It's it's more of like a tactile thing than, you know. Uh, okay. And it's got a, a weighted magazine. Like this weighs about as much. I don't. I haven't actually weighted, but it feels like it weighs similar to a loaded mag. So when you're doing, you know, reloads and shit, it feels legit. I dig it. Is that your laser tag gun? Yep. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. How much is one of those? I think they retail three thirty nine. I want to say. Uh, oh, that's yeah, a little yeah. expensive. Um, yeah. uh, wait, wait, wait. I can. I have a discount code. If you go to their website and punch in, uh, I think it's. Let me look at my email. Is it like free after the discount though? No, get bent okay. if you think that's the case. Uh, <laughs> now, How much me, uh, of a discount are we talking? Hold on, re- relax. Let me look at my thing here. Fifteen percent off if you type in uh, chaos, and uh, that's on their website, nextleveltraining.com. Places never give me discount codes. Did you ask for one? No. <laughs> Yankee, I got to talk to you about something after. I just this call them and scream until they give me free stuff just to get me to go away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I'm hey, hey. Don't you know who I think I am? Who <laughs> <laughs> the fuck I is? Don't you know how popular I think I am? Never works. But it never, I keep trying. The, the one time it works, it'll be worth it. I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, you should get one of those guns for your kitty cats with the lasers. You can have fun with them. Oh, I, I have. I use my laser <laughs> or cider for getting the cats to chase. <laughs> I was gonna say, you put a laser sign on there. What happens if the one time? I was kidding. I was kidding. Yeah. Oh, and, a, and he just caught it too. <laughs> just like Boondock saying, "Ooh." <laughs> I would be tempted to carpet the walls in my house if I had a cat, so that I could run the cat up the wall with a laser. Oh, I know. It'd be so would be fun. Uh, we used to have a pug that would halfway up the wall. Oh no. man. I don't think she would run and just hit the wall, and I swear she'd take two running steps on the wall before she. <laughs> uh, my brother had a really heavily stuccoed wall, that, you know, kind of a, you know, a feature wall in his house, and his, he had one cat, and it started doing it as a kitten, and it kept doing it when it got full grown. It'd climb the stucco. But the funniest thing is, it was a white cat, and it was a white stucco wall, so. <laughs> It's like a chameleon up there. Like a reverse ninja kitty. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Hey, G-Webs, there's a uh, question uh, for, for you about bayonets. Do you need me to copy it? Here, Ray Is he there? No, I saw it. I just said it on mute. Okay. Um, you can get bayonets all over the place. Just keep looking. They're all over eBay and everywhere. The fun part about them is that you'll find them It's Garage sales and yard sales. Yeah, elephant sales. You find them all over the place. Army, Navy stores, everywhere. Well, they're saying that their local surplus stores doesn't have them, but yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. check a different Army surplus store because yeah, they're all over. I, I have to say this about bayonets. From what I found, is people buy them as like, oh, I'll put these on my gun stuff, and they actually get them, and they go, 
I'm never going to use this after a while. It's like workout equipment. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're never going to use a bayonet. This, oh really. It's it's worse than workout equipment because it doesn't make a good clothes hanger. <laughs> oh yeah, if you stick it in the wall, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, G Webs? Is that how your house is? Do you have bayonets stabbed into the walls to hang up coats? <laughs> there's, there's, there's everywhere for coats, for hats, for gun belts. Hey, Biker Bob, just be careful not to hit that white cat when you stick it in the stucco. <laughs> oh yes, well that white cat's long gone, and so is that wall. You know how many service calls I've done where I see the treadmills covered with clothes being hung on them? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, like that's what you do with the treadmills. <laughs> Mostly, unless you put them in front of the TV and use a use a generator to power the TV, and then yeah, pretty much the kids will get on it. The wife won't. She'll just go buy another TV. Jonathan Brewer asked a question. It's one we've covered before, but I don't see a reason why not to cover it again. Uh, do any of you ever fly with a handgun or rifle? Do you ever have any problem doing so? I'll be flying to Washington on vacation soon. I'm thinking about bringing my gun along. Every time I go on vacation, I take my carry gun. I just pack it in a like a Pelican case, as D.B. Cooper said earlier, and uh, check it on the plane. And then when I get there, I check it out, carry it. So never have any problem. As long as you declare it when you go up to like baggage check-in, uh, you should be pretty good. I think they make you like you know they inspect it beforehand to make sure that the uh, it's not loaded or something like that. You're supposed to. I don't think I've ever had that inspected. I don't think they've ever even taken it out of the huh. box. Do you fly the same airline every time? Uh, sometimes it's Delta. Sometimes it's uh, what's JetBlue. Okay. I don't fly, so Asianic. That solves that problem. Yeah. If you're up north, you can. It's not a problem. I mean, in rifles, it's not a problem. Put them in a case. They're locked up. Property on trigger lock on them. That kind of shit. Yeah. Something to note is that you really, really need to have a good quality case. Yeah. Something that can't be destroyed with throwing it around, because I've seen time and time again these like you know egg crate foam cases with like cheap plastic and like a little padlock. They get tossed into the plane, and yeah. guys wonder why either the gun is missing or the the gun is messed up because yeah. they put it in a cheap case. Now, one thing I will say: don't travel with your grandfather's 1911 from World War II. That means more. In life itself, because there is a good chance that you will get it stolen. It has never happened to me yet, but my, yeah. my father works for TSA. He's one of the big wigs for TSA in Alabama, and he'll tell you that the baggage baggage handlers are pretty much ex-cons and people with stalking warrants against them, because that's about the only job they can get. So they will steal your shit, which is one of the reasons the airline quit putting the big red sign on that says "There's a firearm in this box," because they were finding the baggage handlers were stealing about half of them, so they quit doing that. So. Wow. Yeah, you do have the screen locked on me. I don't know, do I? I don't know. If somebody said that, I'm, I'm, yeah, I have no uh, idea. Not, not here, but <laughs> I don't know. We'll I think there's there's a lot of delay on like when it moves around sometimes. All right, I went to Atlantic Firearms and looked at that one that whoever was asking about, and that's a decent price. They used to sell those at K Bar for more than that. So that was uh, Brett McCormick was asking. Thanks. I don't know nothing about no bayonets. Uh, there was a, a kind of an addendum question to the uh, traveling with guns on a, uh, on the airlines. Uh, can you put it in a secure box inside your suitcase, or does it need to be separate? I think it has to be separate. Pretty separate. Sure. It has to be inside your suitcase. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. You put it inside your suitcase. I always pack it, and then they. Then I put it in a checked bag, and they run the checked bag. Sure way to get rid of it is to put it in a separate bag. I know the guys from Magpul drive around with theirs in separate boxes, but anybody would be crazy to steal their guns, but they're the only people I know that carry them around outside of their bags. So the airline doesn't have to, to tag the actual... Because I heard... TSA, they, you know, not the airline. TSA, not the airline. Yeah, TSA. The airline will know that it's in there, but TSA is the ones that come over and look at it. Yeah. And I thought... Okay. So they don't. You don't have to put it in a separate box that they tag, and it goes no, separate it from your luggage. Hold on, it has to be in a box that locks, like everybody's been saying. But that is yep. in a suitcase. That's in your. Okay, suitcase. okay, I got you. If it's a handgun, it's. Longer. I guess if rifles, yeah, I guess yeah. if you're talking rifles, but like I say, most people I don't carry. We're talking CCW carry of a small yeah. box. Yeah. Okay, we're. Although about I to carry two guns when I carry, travel. 
What were you about to say, Yankee? Nothing. <laughs> 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 hmm. If there's any questions worth keeping the chat going for here, or whether it's worth. Who's going to, is everybody running an after chat tonight? I don't know if there's anybody running one or not. No, but I do have a chat tomorrow night. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, tomorrow night. You can go ahead and plug your chat. <laughs> Tomorrow night, 8 p.m., my channel, if you want to come over and uh, talk to a bunch of us. Oh, sure. 8 p.m. my time? 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, oh, YouTube.com slash Chaos311 Clarity. Ha ha. Welcome to Movie Phone. <laughs> Is everybody taking the after chat tonight? I don't know if you anyone or not. I'm not. i got to get up early tomorrow. Yeah, same here. I've got something early in the morning. Edge yeah. will probably do it. He'll, he's a chat whore. <laughs> he's speaking up if he's doing it. Edge, yeah. you awake? Or he already passed out? He might already passed out. Oh, he passed out. Yeah, he's been drinking a lot lately. Oh well, there <laughs> might be after chat tonight. There might not be. Hopefully, one will be directly. If anybody wants to pick one up, just pick it up. This is an interesting question. We could get into something on uh, suggestions on a red dot that could handle the recoil of a Ruger Alaskan. Ooh. What do you guys think? Aim point. Yeah. yeah I'm going to buy a Ruger a Alaskan and then not be able to afford an aim point. <laughs> good point. I think any good quality optic, like, you know, that can be, it, that is designed to be mounted on, like, an AR or something, you know, with a little more substantial recoil impulse, um, that should be able to handle the recoil okay. I mean, most, most modern optics that are of good quality can handle the recoil of a shotgun, you know, a slug gun or something like that, so they should be able to handle uh, a handgun. Yep. I, I know from reading up, uh, Bushnell's higher-end scopes are tested to 10,000 rounds of 375 H and H, which is about what a Ruger Alaskan shoots, I think. Uh, I, I don't... That I don't know. I've never heard that, but that... I mean, that's a pretty solid test, that's for sure. That 375 H&H mag is no joke. Yeah, it's a bit nasty. The only I reason I know... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, the only reason I know that is because I got one of the cheaper banner scopes and emailed them, and they claimed it was to the same specs, and I shot it on my 375, and after 300 rounds, it uh, broke. So what's it like hunting elephants in North America? <laughs> well, no, number one, no, you nothing is escaped from the zoo. Really late yet. at night. <laughs> nothing is. Wasn't it Indiana where a zoo busted like a wall or something, or somebody had a bunch of critters and let them loose or something? That wasn't that long ago. It was like a year ago. That sounds awesome. Did you remember that? And it was like lions and all kinds of stuff running around neighborhoods. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah, like you you're out mowing your lawn and you see. A I know we talked about lion. it in the chats. <laughs> oh my god! That'd be fucking hilarious. That's, that's happened a lot, actually. I mean, well, at least from what I can recall, I remember that. Where do you live that that happens a lot? Well, I live in Missouri, and there's some... <laughs> oh, there you okay, go. Okay, so uh, note, note yourself, <laughs> don't go to Missouri. There, there's a... randomly appear out of nowhere. You can You're go all, to literally. All in Missouri are a goat and a possum tied to a tree. No, no. <laughs> no, there's... There's a cat lady not too far from me, and her... Uh, she has like exotic animals and has you know perm or whatever to have them charge people like ten dollars to walk through and look at them. And uh, they've gotten out more than once. And I remember I used to live near her, and I used to train when I was doing a uh, federal contract security. I used to train like literally like I'd say two streets down from where the lady's business was. <laughs> and uh, we were in training one day, and they were all freaking out and shit, saying, "Yep." Yeah, Everybody grab your guns. Let's go outside and catch us a cougar and get all kinds of other shit. Lions and it was crazy. Now here's here's a good question. Like for for at least you CCW guys, right? Still carries. Uh, if there was a lion on the loose, would you try take it out with your with your carry gun? No, uh, you wouldn't. Be lion. Able to. Lion. Poor little lion. Yeah. Uh, if it was somebody, an lion. African lion. Right? I mean, an African lion. You wouldn't be yeah. able to. No. I, I wouldn't go searching for it. To be yeah. like a little monkey, maybe. I, I would resort to wrestling it. Yeah, I would Obviously. try to make it my pet. <laughs> 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 
wrestling. That I was like, I would do it with my car. Uh, all you gotta do is get behind it, and then yeah, it'll all you gotta do is like, like give it a, no, you give it a hamburger and make it a well, pet. What are you gonna do once you're behind it, huh? All you do, do a line is punch in the kidneys. Till it, yeah, all you do is wait till it's eaten enough homeless people that it gets sleepy and goes to yeah, sleep. They get all logy after a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you can slowly approach them, give it a handful of sleeping pills, and you're good to go. Yeah. yeah can't you, can't you tame it like a, a wild horse? You know, make it your pet. Pretty much every lion has already been tamed, so it's just a matter of making it resort back to its circus years. Well, since you know, I carry, <laughs> I just so happen to carry a 375 H and H Magnum, so it won't be a problem. That's why I carry one of those whips on a long stick and a little like stool. Movie, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stool. Do you, do you have With a the top hat for just such an occasion? No, the monkey <laughs> wears the top hat. Oh, oh like perfect the top hat. What the town custom knives say is saying he will take the chat. The after chat, he's going to run an after chat tonight. I'm not sure if that's what he's saying. He's not. He tried doing one the other day. He said so. It's about time he starts taking some after chats. Uh, there you yeah. go. Who is this? Tired the nice guy him. from Arizona. Those custom knives. Tired of him being a freeloader. The guy oh, sending yeah. all he's those free knives to Yankee. Ghost, Ghost yeah, he's Custom. still uh, he yeah. still hadn't sent me my shit. Yankee <laughs> asked me to start referring to him as the guy that sent yeah, me all the free shit to Yankee. Yeah, he never sent me nothing. He never sent me anything. Hold on. Uh, I'd be I, talking I, a lot nicer about him if he ever sent me anything. There you go. I do like that. I, I don't movie. remember if I showed you guys this. Did you guys see this? Yeah, you saw it in your chat. Yeah, I saw that. Is that like is, is it what? Oh, like a zombie lower? Is that aluminum? It's polymer. It's oh, eighty percent lower. See this? Uh, let's see. There it goes. You can see it this color. Oh yeah, nice. You, I don't know. Oh. Pretty neat. I you mean, did you did it? you have that? Uh, like, what do they call those? The three D printers do that? No, there's a company out there called uh, EP Lowers. That uh, sent this to me. Cool. So I'm going to try it out, see how good it is. It's pretty neat so far. I mean, um, that's pretty what's cool, cool like I, I showed you the different colors, that's really neat. And uh, what they have is on the side, there's like little nubs. That's where you're intended to drill in with whatever size. So, like, as long as you take this color out of the middle of the receiver and you just drill right into here with the appropriate drill bit size, I think you're good to go. Now there's like a little bit of flashing and stuff. Oh, excuse me, uh, this way, in the magwell that could be cleaned up. But other than that, it's it's pretty cool. I like it. If you take that off the logo off the side, I'd let you build be a zombie. Now, how, what does the uh, how does the uh, threads look for your buffer tube assembly? I mean, do they look uh, pretty let's deep? If, let's see if we can get uh, close enough. Can you see that? I can't tell. Mm-hmm. Eh, uh, not really. I can't. It's it's tough to tell, but it looks solid to me. I mean, carbon 15s or whatever they're called have been doing it for years, so we'll see. Right. That. And I have I have a polymer lower on the Chaos carbine, and it's it's done me very very well. Are you gonna get a matching foregrip for that and everything? You know, uh, I don't think I'm gonna go with green. I am going to go with some other ridiculous color, but I'm not gonna go green. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the green. That's cool looking. You make that Thank you. Color green. I swear to God, I'll come up there. What'd you say? I said, if you make that in any other color than green, I swear to God, I'll come up there. Well, I would love for you to come visit me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, get a room. Get a room. Hey, Yankee, there's a badger behind you. Yeah. <laughs> your cat's making YouTube videos with your br uh, your son's old phone. <laughs> so they're getting into that AR. I've got it laying out in the case over there, and she does not like things being out that aren't normally there, so she has to. <laughs> like... It'll be a hundred bucks cheaper because of all the cat hair on it now. I don't like change. <laughs> you know why cats don't like change? Why is that? Pockets. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what? He said because they don't have pockets. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> I can write jokes on the fly. I'm funny. Oh, that was good. That's a good one for Halloween for my kids. What about the ferrets that rob everything from you? The, what about the underpants gnomes? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> underpants equals profit. <laughs> yeah. Underpants, question marks, profit. profit yeah. I'm going to write that. I, I just put up a whiteboard, and I'm totally going to write something, question marks, profit, and send you a picture. I'll, <laughs> I'll try to make it ridiculous for you. That was one of my favorite. That was the, oddly enough on that whole show, and that was one of, that was the funniest thing I found in the whole show. Was when they shoot the underpants was a profit. That was what I thought was like the quintessential moment of the, of the episode. Uh, what so show good. is this? 
South Park. It's a South Park. <laughs> wow. My favorite part is whenever uh, Cartman was hitting the gnome with a stick, and then the gnome went off on him. <laughs> is that all you got? <laughs> Uh, this is an interesting question. Does a stripped polymer lower need a piece of metal to comply with the Undetectable Firearms Act of 1988? Because no, that is technically a firearm. Uh, I do not know the answer to that. However, I can tell you that this, what I have here, is not a firearm yet. This is an 80% lower, so technically this is not a firearm. and um, it, piece. it does not have a serial number. And, and it won't? I, I can actually answer that question because almost all polymer pistol frames are made out of polymer and have no metal in them. So it, it, the problem is is that they can be made completely out of something that doesn't have metal, I think. Yeah. There was a guy recently that made a, a 3D rifle uh, out of po complete polymer parts, to my understanding. I'll see, let me see if I can find a link. If you... Uh actually read the, the, the law itself, it, will, it states in there that when the completed assembled gun, it doesn't say just the, the low or anything like that, it says the completely assembled uh, gun and yeah, firing that's why they're, working. That's why their weapon. laws are stupid though because the ATF will also consider that lower the gun so mm -hmm. you can have that gun sitting there and they can go that is a gun and you're in possession of it and I think it's just a matter of if they feel like Turn that off. Yeah. Not getting you that song. Find something else. Well, what about the buffer spring? Wouldn't that have to be metal or some sort of metal? I mean, well, that's the thing. It springs it, out the, of polymer. If a useful string will be metal, but the the, the question is, are they going to interpret it to say it has to be a completed gun, or are they going to interpret it that right. the part that's the firearm? So to answer your question, most firearms do have a uh, well, they have to have a serial number on them if they're manufactured by a, a licensed manufacturer, like a Glock or whoever. So that's why that thing is a piece of metal. And like a, a gun that doesn't have a piece of metal in the frame is the internal component. What do they call that part, Yankee, where it's just the internal piece that has the trigger and everything? Oh, the FCU? Yeah, whenever they call that the FCU as the gun, then there's just going to be a hole through the frame. But uh, there's going to be have to be a serial number, and that serial number can't be written in plastic. So there's got to be some part of metal uh, impregnated into the plastic or absorbed That's into the plastic somehow it can't come out. Is that why... Is it well? Sorry to cut you. Is that why companies put will put like a little strip of metal and put the serial number on the middle? Yeah, but it's not. I'm saying it's not for the 1988 stupid law against science fiction. It is because they have to have a serial number. And that serial number can't be written in plastic. It has to be written in metal. So okay, okay, right. that makes more sense. Here. But it's stupid. and It's a pain to get that in there, and then they have to serialize it, and it's a pain. So like Gary right. showed in his video, they're going to start going to those internal pieces that they serialize. And then just the frame will just be an insignificant chunk of shell on the outside, which you know they can deal with uh, a lot easier than inventory-wise than all those serialized receivers at some place. And look at it this way too: if say Sig sells you their FCU, now they can direct market over the internet to everybody. You know, they just be like, "Here's your frame for it, and a slide for it, and a barrel for it." They they hardly even need dealers anymore. They can just direct market right to everyone in America through their internet website. And, Send it right to your home because it's not a firearm. The FCU is the firearm. There's all uh, kinds of marketing potential behind those FCUs too. There's certainly a lot of growth because you could sell an FCU and then uh, have like a, a you know different manufacturers for the grips and the frames and that kind of stuff. It would expand things a lot, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, somebody said that You're they should do an open here. source gun, like a Linux gun. That's just the frame is a serialized part, and then everybody that would be just awesome. makes their own pieces. I think that would be incredible. I mean, you, you could. It, it would be similar to like an AR-15 idea in that it's it's got like a core, um, like a core part that you can buy from different manufacturers, but on the exterior or whatever, you could add a bunch of different stuff to it. I think that would be incredible. Uh, somebody said that their new Frontier uh, lower is 100% polymer. There's no metal anywhere. I, I beg to differ. There are springs in that gun, my friend. Yeah, and the serial number is written on a piece of metal. Is that the right. Right. Bit to remember uh, where? Even in the blocks, even on the blocks, a little piece of metal is embedded into the frame for the serial right. number. Right. Right. There's metal on it. What if you use slinky springs? Dan, we're talking. <laughs> 
<laughs> Slinky Springs. <laughs> that's that's what I'm gonna make all my buffer tubes out of slinkies. <laughs> well, what happens? What happens when you get a kink in it? You know, it's impossible to untangle a slinky. That's true. That's a good point. I'm gonna run this till ten o'clock, so we got like another twelve minutes, and then we'll let Ghost Town Custom Knives take over the chat. If he wants to go ahead and get his chat window started like five minutes till, and then just send me a link, I'll put it in the link in here for anybody that wants to follow over there, and then we'll direct people from the actual chat over there too. Cool. Did Egon and Ghostbuster straight on the slinky. What a I reference! Agree. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So how do you guys feel? I mean, while we're on the topic of polymer, eleven that's... minutes of silence until the Yankee turned. No. <laughs> how do you guys feel about polymer AR-15s? Uh, at least the lowers. I don't like them because of the uh, the um, threads for the bumper tube to go into. Is polymer and it just seems like that's gonna wear itself down, work itself You're out. Back, yeah. How? That's my biggest worry. <laughs> Taking it apart and putting it back. Yeah, yeah but I how often do you take a bumper guns are tube wrong. off? Plastic guns are wrong. It would be cool if they did like an aluminum fit, fitted piece in it that was pinned in so you could replace it if it wore out. You know, That's an idea. That's Make true. the whole thing a titanium and then it's you know, lightweight and strong. And... At that point, just make it out of carbon fiber. Yeah. Yeah. It's just made yeah, out that's... of titanium. You know, everyone wants to pay $600 for their lower. I know, right? Six million, yeah. Make it out of unobtainium. Yeah, unobtainium. Yeah, that'd be a good stuff. You can make it out of kryptonite, and then you can use it against Superman. That titanium's no That's joke, true. though. I had a few sheets of that from where I worked at a, a steel factory, and they, they had leftovers in the form and gave it to me. And I used it for, uh, I was helping my cousin build a 280Z Datsun, and he kept complaining about his floorboards rotting out. So I was like, here, take this. <laughs> We made titanium floorboards, went through like four diamond tips, drill bits, oh, yeah. trying to drill holes into that thing. That shit is new. You <laughs> make floorboards the good old-fashioned way out of stolen street signs when I was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you never stole anyway, a stop right? sign, because that would be dangerous. I had a, I had a 1966 Volkswagen Beetle as my first car, that, I'm, that the underpan of the car was more stop sign than it was actual. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, it worked great. Saying, those in there, it'd be just like stronger than the original floorboards. Yep. I mean, that's classic for rat rods. You got to have that. I was just thinking. Somebody said something about a uh, an SR22 not having the serial number on a metal plate, and then I guess they got corrected on that. But uh, Keltex, they have the serial on the rear of some of those guns. Is that in the plastic or is that on the metal? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It's a Keltec. We're talking about guns. No, Keltec, <laughs> the fire control group is like what Yankees talking about. You can take the shell off of a Keltec. That's not the gun. The okay. gun is the trigger and stuff, but it is on the back like you're saying. It's on the back. Yeah, part. yeah. I just I didn't remember what material it was made of. Kryptonite bullets is a stupid idea. Here, I'll tell you why. So I won't mention kryptonite bullets in the chat. Superman weakens with exposure to kryptonite. He's still got his full strength when he first... So if the bullet hits him, he's still going to be invulnerable when the bullet first gets there. It would have to like wait around for a second for it to take effect. So kryptonite bullets are the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, what like, about what if they were 45s? Well, what about they if, they're, if they're 45 ACP? Because they'd be moving so slow. Exactly, yeah. What about <laughs> kryptonite pepper spray? Yeah, kryptonite pepper spray works and stay on the skin. Yeah. Yeah, that'd mess them up good, actually. Take a paintball gun load up with paint that's mixed do you, think, yeah, do you think you could draw that pistol on him, though, and pull that trigger before he gets to you? Well, you'd have to shoot him from behind, but, you know. Well, if they got to set up, like, a flamethrower, almost, except it doesn't actually shoot Superman from flame. behind? What kind of asshole Canadian would shoot Superman? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Canada! He's not stupid. He knows that's the best way to get Superman. Yeah, but he's they way don't... too polite to do that. That's true. He a, He'd say, excuse Canada. me, sir. Excuse me, buddy. Okay. Yes, we have a Captain Canada. There's actually a new one coming out. Apparently, he's even politer. Does he come with bagged milk? <laughs> yeah. I, I won't let that shit go. It was it was a good way to sell milk. No, it isn't. 
Yes, it is. All you have to do is get a jug for it. Then you just cut the corner off the bag and pour it from the jug. Or you can buy it in the jug already, and then you don't have to do that goofy shit. It saves garbage. (laughs) No, it doesn't save the environment. You reuse your uh, container. Hey, 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 you reuse your container, right? And and it's in a plastic bag, so it cuts down on all that volume. It's like Tetris packs. Yeah, we should have that. Over in Japan, you actually get a lot of drinks in bags nowadays. Yeah. Well, so and you know, what's Japan, a Tetris pack? Uh, Tetris pack, except something in a bag, really, but with you know cardboard around it. None of us know what you're talking about when you say Tetris. Uh, a Tetris pack is is like um, what condensed milk comes in sometimes. It's it's essentially a a cardboard container that was a bag that it it, it gets folded around so a it's a uh, square for shipping. It's yeah, like it's a essentially, juice box. Yeah. it's very box similar box. to a juice box. <laughs> That's what a juice box okay. comes in, basically. Yeah. Like yeah, I don't like, like juice boxes. Where? No, I'm just saying it was so that kind of idea. So G Webs is above juice boxes. What's up with that, bro? I don't like juice boxes. Bastard <laughs> container, and I won't accept it. I will, however, I'm open-minded to the bag idea because that will save. What about Capri it. Sun? That's like an in-between. Hate em. Group No, thing. that's a fake drink inside of a fake container that shouldn't exist. <laughs> hey, respect the pouch. Totally European. Whatever. If you want to go live in Europe, go live in Europe. It's America. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. America. Yeah, so, uh, that's the people okay. say it's like when the kids started playing the video games. It's when they started drinking that Capri Sun crap, in those little pouches. That's when America started to turn in. Those, <laughs> those uh, little I was pretty, I was pretty sure it was that kids, rock and roll in the fifties. Why have I got no. my headphones in? I don't have them plugged in. I thought it was the flappers of the twenties that destroyed the United States. That could have been. No, no. They were pretty crazy. I mean, that's Actually, when like girls with short skirts and showing their ankles and even their knees and. Yeah, yeah, in a lot of ways, that's what created pro- prohibition, you could say, and then that's what really screwed it us up because that's what created powerful criminals. Yep. Okay, there's the cowbell again. Oh, he was gone. He must have something like hollow. I don't know what it is, but it's often <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Cody made a good point. Uh, it's, you guys were talking about. You know, bag drinks in Japan. Well, drink, uh, Japan also has used panty vending machines, so that's not really a good example. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah <laughs> Jap- Japanese. I mean, their most popular porn is is anime, which is like cartoon porn. And, and then it's called hentai and tentacles. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It always yeah. has to have tentacles. Yeah. Don't, don't they celebrate the penis over there too? Like, have a big. Yep. Position. Yeah, they have this big fair. Right. They this is what carry the big floats of too. penises around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, in Finland, they have the museum of the penis where they have specimens from why over 150 different animals. Yeah. That's what I was. And why did you feel ask. important to share it with us? <laughs> Guys, I just got back from my trip to the penis museum. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a combo. That place is a waste of money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I much just hype. Uh, it, it was all hype. It was like the Caltech of museums. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey guys, yeah, I just got back from Finland. You won't believe how many penises I saw. <laughs> the food sucked, but the tips were big. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is this New England or New war. Zealand? Has uh, uh, Ghost Town Custom Knives, you got your chat started up yet? Send us a send me a PM seen me a link. Anything in a while. PM me a link so I can post it up here. Is he even still in the chat? Did he, did he, he just tease us and then run off? I don't know what he did. <laughs> he probably he gotta start one. If he doesn't start one up, I'll do one. Museum comments. I'm be super tactical. <laughs> Uh, so, for real, you paid that much money just for a gun to, to practice with? Like a laser gun to practice with? 300 and some dollars? This is actually a really valuable tool. Huh? Well, um, I hope it's at least worth 300 and something dollars. Well, yeah, when they're the, marketed for, at that level, it's typically an instructor going to buy that so that they have it for their students. You know, well, it's not just that, classes. that. That's where I think a lot of their base customers are, but I think beyond that, the cost of ammo right now is effing ridiculous. So any opportunity to be able to practice somewhat realistically and not send rounds down range and still get like decent manipulation or accurate. I mean, this is 
this is pretty damn close to a Glock. I mean, that's yeah, they do have a lot of reset and stuff. Another way you got to buy it. Here, here you go. Here you go. I'll show you. You can leave right. that dedicated. Does that slide work? The slide does not move. That's it works, way. but it doesn't do blowback like an airsoft. This particular one does not move. Oh, I thought you can still rack a racket. No, I mean most guys that have they they make a, this one is the polymer slide. They make one with a metal slide. It's more expensive. This oh. one is a red green with a polymer slide. It's a it's like four ounces lighter. I don't give a shit. Um, but uh, it's got decent trigger on it. I don't know if you you guys probably can't hear the clicking, but um, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can hear it. I don't but know, I also imagine like, somebody who's like uh, who shoots race guns competitively. That's you know, especially if they're traveling, and uh, a lot of those guys, you know, go compete in different states, so they can take that with and compete in the hotel or practice in the hotel room. Exactly. You know, on that level, it's worth three hundred bucks. Moon Food said he'll do the chat if Ghost Town doesn't, so we'll see which one of them comes up with a chat here. Huh? Yeah, and, and like I said, Edge said he'd do it. Well, Edge, we asked that earlier, and he laid there. Passed out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pass out? I just told you I'm done. I'm tired. I like I call it. No, no I, I went through mine. I went through mine. Ghost, uh, Ghost Town was asking if you can start it from YouTube. You got to start it from uh, Google Plus, I believe. I don't know. You, you can start oh, it from yeah. YouTube now. You have to start it from YouTube for it to broadcast on YouTube. No, you can start it from Google Plus and have it broadcast. Oh, really? Yeah, you, I used to, you, have to, you used to have to do it from over there. Go to where it Now shows. you can do it from both, I think. Yeah, go to your YouTube page and go to where it says Upload and click that and it'll bring down a little menu and just click on that it says Live Broadcast thing and click that and you'll be good to go. I didn't know you could do it from your channel. I thought that was a live event only or whatever. It used to be. Well, that, that, it used to be for what for about a month, you could only start it. I don't even know if it was that long. But you could only start it from Google Plus to get it to broadcast live, and no, then yeah, they fixed it. it. So they're asking Chaos how much that thing compares to how much it compare. How does it compare to the Glock one? The Glock one is unobtainable, so at least you can buy the one Chaos has there. I've never seen the Glock. I didn't know Glock made one like that. Glock makes a reset, and they make a trainer. The trainer shoots the ammunition, and the reset. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, reset. yeah. But it slide works, and you can insert a mag, and there's no chamber, so you can... And it has just a reset trigger, just kind of like that, except it's just reset. Right. Anyway, they're oh, so that like a Glock You have to, to be a me. Glock armor, and you still can't get them. I mean, this is this is shaped very, very close to a Glock 17. That's what I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's their intention. Um, the guy who is actually, I believe, the owner of the company that made this was... Um, Oh, what is his name? I don't want to get it wrong. He was on Top Shot. I, I gotta think of his name. I think it's Mike Hughes. Does that sound right? Let me look. He was a he was a bigger like a kind of muscular guy on uh, Top Shot a few seasons ago, and uh, yeah, Mike Hughes. And uh, he I guess he you know partially developed this, and I I genuinely think this is a really neat tool and. I actually have one of their uh, AR bolts to try and mess with as well. It replaces the bolt carrier group and uh, sends a laser down your bore so that you can practice similarly. Um, you know, obviously it's not going to be this identical manipulations because you're not racking it back and forth and all that uh, quite as much. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, the video's coming, you know what I mean? More more time needed. As soon as... As soon as uh... Custom gets this up and running, we'll be out of here. So we're just waiting now so I can post a link and direct people over. So as soon as he gets it up and sends me a link here, we're going to end this. So, people watching can uh, go off of his name in the chat, though. You can just click on his name of his yeah. channel there, then go to his feed, and you'll see the thing that he started. I'm trying to get an inside link, though, for people here who want to transfer over, over to his uh, chat. Uh, if anybody, be a smart uh, way to do it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he has my PayPal account. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. I'm sure he can get it just off the bathroom wall like the rest of us did. <laughs> Call for a good time. Okay. Let's see. Is he going to... Well, everyone that's in the live chat here, hang out for a few minutes, hopefully. Maybe he'll get it sent over to us. Yeah, otherwise, I'm good to hang out. Otherwise, everyone can go over to Ghost Town Custom Knives. You can see him if you span down through the chats here. I'll, I'll, I'll type in here how you actually spell his not name.
to the actual running chat here. Just look up his channel, go to his feed, be able to find the uh, uh, the chat, and hopefully he'll send a link here to us to get us into the actual chat part, which he has not done yet. Uh, but uh, to everyone in the live chat, thanks for showing up tonight, as usual. And uh, thanks to everyone who participated in the video portion of the chat up here. Uh, I think we covered the topics pretty well tonight. Stayed fairly good on topic. Covered some interesting stuff. Not super interesting, but fairly interesting. And uh, see you again next week. Say goodbye, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Appreciate it. See you all. So and welcome back to Bulldog for everybody. So much on over and over. Welcome back, Bulldog. Welcome back, Bulldog.